standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. This episode of the Paracast is brought to you by Audible.com, the Internet's leading provider of audiobooks with more than 75,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, and periodicals. For a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash Paracast. That's audiblepodcast.com slash Paracast. And now, on with the show. Chris O'Brien is our co-host this week. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. And I don't know what I was in when I was reading, what, a few days ago, about some astrophysicist connected with the UN, and he's going to be our ambassador to ET. What the heck is that about? I think it's a she, but... Uh... I can't tell from those names. <laughs> See, now I'm going to get all sorts of cards and letters. How can you not tell? Well, oh, no, it sounds kind of fishy to me, Gene. Well, I mean, it sounds good. You know, let's have an ambassador to E.T. Don't we need one? I mean, they just discovered well, another Earth kind already, of planet, we, the Goldilocks planet. They we've discovered. We've already got an ambassador. His name is Stephen Greer. Right? <laughs> Can I cough a little bit? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm yeah. going to cough. <clears throat> Humankind's self-appointed ambassador to the universe. I mean, uh, how many ambassadors do we need? Well, I think maybe somebody who we could trust. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's the ticket. As someone said, who was it? Jack Nicholson used the words, where's the trust? Yeah. In the movie A Few Good Men. No, not in the movie A Few Good Men. As good as it gets. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that? Where's the trust? Yeah, you can't handle the truth. Well, we don't want to answer that because in this show, we want you to handle the truth. One other development before you tell us what you've discovered this week about some new cattle mutilation cases it was a press conference featuring Robert Hastings and Robert Salas and all sorts of ex-military people at the National Press Club. And it was carried live by CNN and got all sorts of interview coverage over on cable news networks of all yeah, sorts, yeah. even Fox News, believe it or not. Yeah, I don't believe it, but gosh, uh, can you believe it? Y you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm amazed that, um, you know, a 30 five-year-old uh, event should capture the imagination of the mainstream press in the way that it uh, evidently did, although um, Reality Uncovered did uh, post a very interesting article by Stephen Broadbent that uh, calls into question uh, some of the facts that were presented. I do urge our listeners to, uh, to do their own research and uh, look at both sides of this particular equation, but it's good to see that uh, we're at least, I think, beginning to get beyond the giggle factor when it comes to the mainstream press covering UFO-related stories. And I think uh, regardless of whether uh, it generated uh, you know, more than a news cycle or two's uh, coverage, I, I think it's important that the uh, mainstream media is, you know, I think to a certain degree, is uh, eliminating some of the little green uh, men jokes. <laughs> Well, now they're little gray men, aren't they? But right. seriously speaking, you mentioned something here, and you created the climate for a debate, like a great debate with Stephen Broadbent, who's right. been on the Paracast in our early years, and Robert Hastings. Do you think we can get these two together? Mm -hmm. That would be a good show, huh? Well, you're assigned. Mm -hmm. You can check that out for us. But <laughs> okay. the key is, of course, that UFOs are being taken more and more seriously, certainly the success of Leslie Kane's book on UFOs. Yes. Yes. Because that got to the top 30 of the New York Times bestseller list, just down from all the conservative books mm -hmm. on politics. So that's pretty good. Pretty good development. Very, very good. Yeah, there's, there may be hope for this field yet, although sometimes I really have problems believing that. Speaking of hope for any field, especially the paranormal, you told me before we started this week's session that you got wind of a new set of cattle mutilation cases. Yeah. Hmm. Give us a briefing. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, it seems that the Hall County ranching family has been quietly undergoing quite a wave of unusual livestock deaths. Uh, over the past year, they've lost 20 head. I called up the Hall County Sheriff's Department and offered any sort of assistance uh, that I, I could to, uh, to help them out in their investigation and uh, spoke with the chief investigator of the case, uh, Inspector Daniel Korn, and uh, he it's a very curious uh, case, Gene. It, it has some very peculiar um, elements to it, including the University of Georgia Diagnostic Lab, I think, was 
uh, called in to do some forensic testing. They found an unknown poisoning agent that may have been involved in the actual cause of death in one of the cases. And unfortunately, there's not really a budget there to do the battery of tests that um, that would be needed to actually identify what that agent was. But a lot of your standard poisons were, I think, fairly factored out of this. And uh, one of the things that uh, is very peculiar to me is you have, um, this is right in the middle of Georgia ranching country, and you have uh, cattle ranches all around this one particular ranch, and nobody else is experiencing any any sort of uh, unusual livestock deaths except for this one family. And uh, the investigators of the case are convinced that uh, some perpetrator with a sharp in- implement, not a laser or anything, but a sharp like a scalpel or sharp knife is uh is excising these soft tissue organs from these animals and it it really uh it really caused a bit of a stir cnn covered it uh it's on a lot of the news wires and i think it's going to be interesting to see if uh the trail cams and other uh investigative tools that they're you know breaking out to help try to get to the bottom of this so it'd be interesting to see uh, what kind of results the investigators get do you think it's a human actor or a paranormal one responsible for this well, we don't have any evidence to suggest that any sort of uh, UFOs have been sighted. Actually, no military uh, helicopters have been sighted. Um, it's it's a real mystery. And most of these animals have been found right on a uh, creek that runs through the property. In fact, one animal was found immersed into the creek. Um, we have animals that have uh, bled out through their eyes. Uh, there, there's There's peculiar elements to this, and I'm not really sure what to make of it. Supposedly, there's no poison plants in the environment there, so that, that would be my first... Uh, my first guess is that these animals are some somehow poisoning themselves, but that doesn't seem to be the case. And I think uh, the jury's out, and I, I will be, uh, you know, helping out uh, as, as best I can. Uh, you know, officials who are investigating these cases, so we'll see. You know what? We need basically a forensic anthropologist like the woman over in the TV show Bones. Don't know if you ever see that on Fox. <laughs> I don't watch TV, Gene. You don't? No. You miss all the pop culture. I know. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why. Well, you know what's I, uh, funny? I'm a Hulu guy. I'm a Hulu guy. So You're a Hulu guy. All right. Well, that's how it goes. Speaking of that, you still see the shows, you know. You just don't have to pay for the local cable provider or have an antenna up on your TV. I don't have to listen to all those darn commercials. Hey, we have darn commercials ooh, on the ooh. show. Don't! Oh! <laughs> that's how we survive. I fast forward through them, Gene. I fast forward through them. <laughs> Don't tell the network that. I won't repeat it. Okay, we've got an interesting tale to tell with tonight's guest. An oh, exclusive boy. story. This is going to be fascinating. Tell us about it. Well, uh, I met Anthony Sanchez just recently uh, at the uh, Angel Fire Paranormal Conference, and uh, we sat down and spoke at length about this particular scenario. He has a book coming out in December called UFO Highway. And one of the, uh, huh, one of the interesting elements in the book is a, uh, a new whistleblower that has come forward. He's a retired colonel, and uh, he has a very interesting claim. He claims that he was part of a team that, uh, that worked in the notorious alleged underground base at Dulce on the Hickory Apache Indian Reservation. Um, I, of course, you know, working in the San Luis Valley for many years, which is just about 40 to 60 miles away from Dulce, have always been interested in the subject of underground bases and in particular in the Dulce uh, myth uh, at this point. Well, OK, and, that's the important point here. Up till now, we've regarded Dulce as a myth, one of the ufological myths that has arisen in recent years. Well, Anthony begs to differ with us uh, based on the testimony of this colonel. He's done an extensive uh, series of interviews. Uh, he has checked out his background. He does appear to be who he is. Uh, we're going to have fun with Anthony today on this show because uh, there's some very interesting uh, information allegedly coming out of this case. So hang on to your hats and fasten your seatbelts. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to basically get a new slant on the Dulce Myths from Anthony Sanchez. A reminder, neighbors, that we have forums where you can comment on the show at forum.paracast.com, forum.paracast.com. The co-host is Chris O'Brien. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. (laughs) 
As you know, the PowerCast is brought to you by Audible.com, the Internet's leading provider of audiobooks. With more than 75,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature and featuring audio versions of many New York Times bestsellers, for listeners of the PowerCast, Audible.com is offering a free audiobook to give you a chance to try out their service. One book to consider, for example, is Above Top Secret, the worldwide UFO cover-up by Timothy Good. Timothy Good, as you know, has been a guest on the PowerCast. Yet another book worth considering from Audible.com is Lies and Deception, UFOs and the Secret Agenda, from Timothy Good once again, and also from our old friend Nick Pope. As you know, Nick Pope has also been on the PowerCast. This is another book that you're definitely going to want to check out. For this book or another free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash paracast. That's audiblepodcast.com slash paracast. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm. This time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237, and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. In confusing times, would a simple outlook on health and beauty make sense? If you're tired of taking dry vitamins without noticing any results, then the Bogdana Nutritional Formula is for you. Easy to take and absorb. The absorption of liquids is 98% in comparison to only 20% for dry vitamins. For the past 25 years, Bogdana Rejuvenating Nutritional Formula has been proven to get results. Detox, nourish, and rejuvenate your body with this one-of-a-kind supplement that contains 150 natural and organic nutrients. And a one month supply is less than a dollar per day. Take charge of your health and feel the difference with Bogdana Liquid Vitamins or your money back. Go to B O G D A N A liquidvitamins.com or call 1 800 234 5608. That's Bogdana Liquid Vitamins.com or call 800 234 5608. Give your body what it needs and it will perform miracles in return. For inner health and outer beauty, feel the difference with Bogdana Liquid Vitamins today. Less is more. I want you to think of Life Change T as, well, a 2008 Ferrari 612. The Ferrari 612 is a two door, four passenger luxury car that gives an exploding 540 horsepower through its six liter V12. It has a top speed of 199 miles per hour and can accelerate zero to 60 in about four seconds. Life Change T will accelerate your life into feeling more energy, losing weight, and cleansing toxins out of your body so you'll live longer. And guess what? You can accelerate your life without a Ferrari 612 sticker price of $318,000. You can buy green tea for less, but unfortunately, it's just another daily driver with no performance. So for just about a dollar a day, you can drive the Ferrari of teas. Don't be fooled by size. Check our website out at getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. Or you can call us at 928-308-0408. Again, that's 928-308-0408. Remember Life Change Tea. Tired of searching for great talk radio? Search no more. I'm told that it has everything. We are the GCN Radio Network. We want to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. Get in on all the action at forum.theparacast.com. The co-host this week is Chris O'Brien. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. And our guest, Anthony Sanchez, 
author of a forthcoming book called UFO Highway, but we're interested this week focusing primarily on the Dulce interview. Chris, why don't you pick up from here and lead us towards the first round of questions. Anthony, welcome to the show. First of all, as I mentioned in the preamble, uh, we met at the ASPE uh, Angel Fire Paranormal Conference, and boy, I'll tell you, I was very, uh, I was quite taken aback by the uh, interesting story that you related to me, and I instantly felt that you would make a great guest on the Paracast, and we welcome you to the Thank show. Thank you for having me. What we want to do, I think, is is kind of give uh, our listeners a little background on you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how you met this uh, enigmatic uh, whistleblower or colonel, uh, and then we'll get into some of the particulars of what the colonel had to say about Dulce. Okay. Um, as far as my background, I've been uh, researching UFOs for about 20 years, and I've had a lot of experience in the field going to various crash sites throughout the southwest. Um trying to make vacations out of them but out of them but they usually turn into work and um i've never i've never thought about writing before until about uh, maybe three years ago because i had such a massive repository of data that i just needed to finally get some of the uh, theories and ideas that i had out there to the public with respect to the areas that i focus on which is really alien and human hybridization um i came up with something called transformation hypothesis which is sort of uh, uh, synthesizes data from uh, other experts and then uh, lends me the ability to formulate my own ideas. Um, and I also do a lot of work on uh, HARP and Project Blue Beam, uh, combining the two with respect to various um, conspiracies. And um, Before we go on with that, Anthony, would you maybe clarify to our listeners what that's all about? Yeah, HARP is this, uh, is this uh, massive radio array up in Alaska uh, which has been uh, uh, connected to uh, various different types of um, um, uh, activities uh, uh, that result from the use of this technology. Uh, some people claim that there's uh, the potential for inflicting seismic activity anywhere around the globe. Some people say that it has the ability to uh, inflict uh, severe weather uh, patterns, you know, so there's, so there's weather man manipulation uh, uh, group. Uh, then, then, then there's this other theory, which I buy heavily into because of some of the research that I've done, which um, essentially the HARP uh, technology is, uh, it has the ability to essentially burn uh, the ionosphere and create temporary plasma uh, fields uh, that are controllable for, uh, uh, you know, undetermined periods of time, uh, which can then be used as a uh, pretty much a, a screen that you can project live uh, 3D motion imagery upon. Um, imagine uh, walking out of your house, looking up and seeing the USS Defiant above your house. I have uh, evidence that they can do that. I mean, it's, it, that, that, it, that's possible. And um, I've uncovered evidence in some uh, documents that were released uh, with quotes made by the program manager of HARP, who works out of the uh, AFRL, the Air Force Research Laboratory, and one of the high-ranking senior engineers, um, a, a, a part of the HARP program, um, there's some very, very, very interesting comments that they made, and they will be in my book, UFO Highway. Well, there's one thing here about all this is if we have something that can create images of that nature, does that mean that sometimes UFO sightings and other events are created in that fashion? Absolutely, and um, that's uh, one of the uh, theories that I discuss uh, you know, heavily in the book is that uh, ma you know, many of the UFO sightings that are seen you know, around the world are, you know, possibly uh, projections that are being uh, facilitated through HARP technology. And that ties directly into Project Bluebeam. And uh, in the old days, Project Bluebeam was essentially this conspiracy that was about espousing a new age religion uh, upon the global populaces. Um, however, that has now uh, metamorphosized and has become something else entirely because of po uh, politics and because of um, uh, advancements in technology and uh, the, the changing world. I mean, uh, when you look at the world and how it's evolved, uh, you know, you have new countries, you have new borderlines, you have new enemies, uh, you have new allies, uh, things change. And so the utilization of HARP technology moving forward uh, is going to be through uh, potentially uh, Project Bluebeam, which has again evolved into something entirely, which is now going to be used to manipulate a specific uh, 
uh, geopolitical region. For instance, imagine a bunch of uh, people in Palestine walking out of their homes and seeing an image of some uh, Islamic deity uh, or like like uh, like the Prophet Muhammad telling them something, uh, freaking them out, and then you know triggering a massive type of uh, uh, conflict between them and, and Israel, something we've never even seen before, something beyond what we see now. I mean, those are the types of things they can do. So I mean, it's not limited to just one area. You know, uh, one of the things that I talk a lot about with uh, Norio Hayakawa is, you know, well, how would something like this be implemented within the confines of the United States? It's possible that, uh, you know, uh, we can be staging some type of the uh, UFO uh, um, event. Uh, right, right now, as a matter of fact, um, uh, I'm writing an editorial, a piece on why we're seeing such heavy practices of disclosure coming out. You have this new show, The Event, on NBC. You have the Vatican, and you have the Vatican... Uh, uh, you know, saying that they're going to uh, baptize aliens if we find them. Uh, yeah, we have- should mention, by the way, those of you who haven't seen the TV show The Event, okay? It's on NBC on Monday evenings, and it's one of those serialized dramas, action dramas with science fiction overtones. And let me give you the spoiler, ladies and gentlemen. The spoiler is that a number of years ago, like 60-some-odd years ago, aliens landed or crash-landed and they were captured by the military authorities. They're being kept prisoner. And I guess now there's an effort, as I gathered, for them. They're humanoid creatures with subtle differences from humans in the sense that they live much longer, they don't age as fast, that they're trying now, I guess, to rebel. So, you know, that's part of it. And, you know, we'll have to see how it turns out. We'll have to see if the show even lasts, because a lot of these shows never last. Let me ask you a couple of quick questions here. The thing I gather here, this UFO Highway book, is it going to focus primarily on efforts or possibilities of disinformation with regard to UFOs? Not necessarily. Um, When I wrote uh, the majority of the Heart Project Blue Moon section, I actually focused on an area that I call uh, transient digital audio phenomena, which is a unique uh, 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 discovery. Uh, I don't think I made the discovery, but I think I'm the one who's writing about it first. Uh, People that live uh, very close to base transceiver systems, which are uh, cell towers, uh, we found this unique scenario where like a family will be living in a home within three to five miles of a base trans- uh, transceiver system, and uh, two members of the family will hear something, and they'll like be in different areas of the home, but they'll both walk to like let's say the garage, and they say, "Did you hear something coming from the garage?" So you have this directed, you know, you have this directed, you know, uh, digital signals that are occurring that certain people are picking up on because they share a very close brainwave frequency. We'll get into the dangers of cell towers and a lot more in our next section. We have Anthony Sanchez, the book coming up later this year, UFO Highway, and we'll start focusing on what he's learned about Dulce in a short time. The co-host is Chris O'Brien. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in The Paracast. <laughs> Okay, neighbors, here's the problem. Face-to-face business meetings with clients and colleagues are always going to be important. But business travel is a hassle, and it's often a complete waste of money. Well, here's a solution for you. Do more. Travel less with GoToMeeting. GoToMeeting is an award-winning online meeting service brought to you by Citrix with just a click. Host sales presentations, training sessions, or product demos right from your own desk. Avoid the hassle of traveling and still exceed your sales goals. Plus, GoToMeeting is just $49 a month for unlimited online meetings. Plus, voice over IP and phone conferencing is included. My listeners can try GoToMeeting free for 45 days. For this special offer, visit GoToMeeting.com slash podcast. Once again, go to meeting free for 45 days. Visit gotomeeting.com slash podcast. Before you purchase any water filters, you should know there's a superior American-made water filtration system available. This water filter's housing is made of high-quality stainless steel, and its filters outperform all others in the industry and are the only ones that exceed EPA standards. It's a gravity-fed water filtration system requiring no electricity or plumbing. It removes chlorine, chemicals, and dangerous biological pathogens, producing quality drinking water for less than two cents per gallon. Plus, its filters can be cleaned 
cleaned up to 200 times. What is it? It's the Aqua Rain. Owning an Aqua Rain means you own the best money can buy. Learn more and see other quality emergency preparedness products at myaquarain.com. Use the GCN code and you'll receive the book Do It Yourself Emergency Preparedness absolutely free. To order, visit myaquarain.com or call 800-585-5077. That's myaquarain.com or 800-585-5077. Where have all the military surplus stores gone? Don't worry, you don't need one. Because everything you need at Military Surplus is at MainMilitary.com. That's M-A-I-N-E Military.com. One of the last surviving true military surplus stores in the country. Go online now to MainMilitary.com and discover a source for hard-to-find surplus items at true surplus prices. Surplus gun cleaning kits as low as $2.99. Complete chemical suits as low as $11.99. See our huge selection of gas masks, filters, and accessories. Finish it. M10 gas masks are three for thirty dollars, and Swiss filters are three for twelve dollars. Searching for strike anywhere matches? MainMilitary.com has them. Plus a whole new product line of survival and first aid kits, and lots more. Get free shipping on orders over fifty dollars only at MainMilitary.com. That's M-A-I-N-E Military.com, or call 877-608-0179. 877-608-0179. MainMilitary.com, the main name in military supply. Most people know that drinking pure, high-alkaline pH water is the most important factor in maintaining high energy and vibrant health. Most experts agree that the water you drink should be at a pH level of 8 or higher. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops combine a unique formula of the most alkaline minerals. Using Plasma pH Drops is the best way to make your water alkaline to help you get rid of acid and regain your health and energy. Simply put 10 drops in the water you drink to raise the pH to a healthy level. Alkalizing water helps your body rid itself of acidic waste and increases the oxygen content of your body. Disease organisms like bacteria, viruses, and cancer cannot survive in an alkaline high pH environment. Order your bottle of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops now by going directly to AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Or call 269-409-1776. 269-409-1776 today. On air, online, and on demand. They say we offer simple answers to complex problems. We are the GCN Radio Network. You're in the Paracast. You never know what's going to happen next. We have Anthony Sanchez joining us on the Paracast this week. I'm Gene Steinberg. The co-host is Chris O'Brien. And we are talking about his forthcoming book, UFO Highway, and you're getting an exclusive look at some of the things that he's learned and put together for this book, including the revelations about Dulce. But right now, we're talking about cell towers. So if you're near a cell tower, it's affecting your brain waves, right? That's that what, right. Okay. So, so we, we found a scenario whereby... Uh, families who live uh, within a close proximity of base transceiver systems, which are cell towers, um, whereby we found, um, you know, families who live close to base transceiver uh, systems, these cell towers, um, they're they're getting this uh, directed digital signals, uh, you know, uh, maybe in, in the direction of their home, and certain people within the family will are picking up on this because they share a very close brainwave frequency. Um, and throughout my research, and I'm not a specialist on the brain, but I'm a you know a researcher. And one of the things I found was that, uh, like fingerprints, um, the human brain wave, uh, uh, each human has their own frequency that they operate on, uh, but it's, it, it does fall within a range. So you can have a very very close uh, uh, pattern uh, to somebody else, a frequency re- uh, uh, a pattern within that range that you'll both pick up on. Um, so it's kind of like uh, tuning into an AM station, not quite getting it, but uh, you're almost there, but you can hear it. You can make it out. So that's is this harmful happening. at all? I really hate to interrupt, but is this harmful? I don't think that there is uh, any uh, significant ed- evidence uh, uh, proving that it's harmful uh, because we have radio waves going through our body, uh, you, know, you know, at millions of times a second all throughout the day. And, and essentially, this is just a manipulation of these types of uh, ra- uh, radio waves. Um, so, and, and I do, uh, I do um, actually document in the book, uh, you know, the various ranges, the, di- the different types of, uh, of, 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 of frequencies and uh, uh, radio waves and microwave waves that are used. 
uh, with, with the various technologies as part of these base transceiver systems, which are incidentally in every single uh, major metropolitan area within the United States and now uh, outside, uh, extending into the rural areas. I mean, you're, you're pretty much... You know, unless you're, you know, up at the, uh, I was going to, I was a poor analogy, I was going to say, unless you're up at the top of the uh, plateau of Archuleta Mesa, but no, they even got towers up there now. So, well, Anthony, uh, Anthony, to- let me, let me uh, just kind of uh, break in here for a minute. That's a pretty, uh, that's a pretty interesting claim. And, uh, you know, putting on my skeptic hat here for a, a moment, uh, why haven't we heard any reports from people that have had this type of uh, strange kind of effect happen to them? This is the first that I've heard of it. There's hundreds of cell towers uh, yeah, around right. the country. Why, why haven't yeah. we heard anything about this? Because this is closely uh, affiliated with something that most people don't want to talk about. And that is schizophrenia. You know, when you start talking about, oh, you're hearing voices in your head, uh, you start sending off signals to people, and they don't want to, they essentially don't want to touch the subject. So it's a very, very taboo thing to talk about. And, uh, and I, you know, through my research have found that this has absolutely nothing to do with schizophrenia. There's no relation whatsoever under than, other than the coincidence that, you know, you're hearing things in your head. Uh, schizophrenia is uh, derived from something else completely different. and It has nothing to do with the types of uh, uh, signals that are being uh, uh, facilitated and sent out through these uh, base transceiver systems. Have there been any studies that look at the, uh, the adverse effect of uh, cell tower transmissions on, uh, on the human uh, brain? Do you know of any studies that have been done? There are actual studies out there um, that I do... Uh, uh, list in the book with regards to uh, like very acad- various academic institutions who've talked about the potentials of harm uh, of these uh, of the signals being sent out from the uh, the cell towers. Um, but there's not. Uh, I know. I think this has a lot to do with the fact that you know you have a, a heavy investment from the private sector from the private sector uh, in 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 the placement of these uh, close to homes. I mean. There are people who are getting paid ten thousand dollars a month to have one of these things erected in the backyard of their home, along because they're alongside a freeway. Uh, you know, and, and people don't want to argue with receiving ten thousand dollars a month. And these uh, major corporate conglomerates who are uh, who make up the cell phone industry uh, and wireless industries, uh, you know, they do everything within their, within their power to make sure that no negative statements about the technology make it out, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, the public. Well, you also know, Anthony, that people, for example, have their new iPhones or whatever. They yeah. demand proper or good quality telephone and data service, and you get into a lot of cities, they have lousy cell tower network installations and of course the wireless carriers are doing anything possibly desperately trying to get those towers erected. Of course, in some towns, of course, it can be done easily. I understand in Texas you can do one in three mm-hmm. weeks. In San Francisco, it's more like three years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, red tape that's uh, easily, you know, uh, sliced through when it comes with regards to, you know, your typical bureaucratic uh, type of uh, holdups that would normally take place. They just don't happen with when, they, when you're talking about the cell phone industry, these things get erected ev- everywhere and as quickly as possible. As I said, uh, except for San Francisco. Except for San well, Francisco, right? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Maybe they know something we don't. Uh, <laughs> what is the connection between the uh, this particular cell tower scenario in Harp and the actual Gwen towers, the ground warning emergency network tower system? Is there uh, is there a similar type of uh, concern? Uh, in relation to the Gwen Towers, which replaced... I think that the, yeah, yeah, I think that, uh, uh, you know, irrespective of, of whether it's, uh, uh, you know, the, the Gwen Towers or the uh, the, uh, uh, the the base transceiver systems, uh, they're, they're both, you know, potentially, uh, you know, uh, usable by uh, the powers that be, you know, to facilitate that type of a scenario, Project Blue Beam scenario. So we're talking about the mass manipulation uh, in uh, of the populace, basically, with uh, certain frequencies that are known to generate and elicit uh, fairly predictable responses in humans, right? That's right, because at certain frequencies, you can trigger emotional responses uh, and even behavioral responses. 
So you can pick out a certain group, people, piss them off, and uh, see what, watch what happens. What happens if they broadcast a uh, plea to the populace to uh, vote for Sarah Palin in 2012? I think we'll all be in trouble. Then we're all in trouble. You see, ladies and gentlemen, as much as we try, we can't avoid politics. And we're talking about Alaska, as a matter of fact. Well, that's where Galcona is, so that's where Harp is. So I just figured mm-hmm. I'd throw that one in there. Yep. Okay. Hey, but, but she can see Russia from her window. <laughs> well, maybe it's because of the brain waves, or lack of them. Well, you know what? They might have a cell tower right there. But again, as I said, let's not get into politics insofar as this is involved, though. But okay, as a point of reference here, if you're mentioning this in a UFO book, aren't you conveying the possibility there that somehow this sort of technology is used in connection with UFO sightings, UFO cases, even insofar as faking them? Yeah, I think that they can definitely use these to... um fake like a massive ufo uh sighting what if they want to incite t- some type of an event uh then what if they want to trigger the populace to react adversely uh and uh you know um rush into these fema camps or something you know uh how are they going to do that well if you have a fleet of ufos over your home and uh you know and your and, and the the, the uh, media the controlled media is sending all these messages through radio and television that uh some major event is happening and everybody rushed to your local FEMA camp, uh, there's going to be National Guard posted outside, you know, uh, you know, soldiers posted outside the, the, to direct you to the right place. I mean, that's, uh, that could be a scenario. That's just one scenario that we could be looking at. Uh, so, yeah. All right, we'll have to explore that as we progress in this show. But also I want to get to Dulce very soon because obviously that's our headline subject. We have Anthony Sanchez. He's a longtime UFO investigator. His forthcoming book is called UFO Highway. We'll tell you more about the book in further sections of the show. Of course, you want to discuss this, neighbors, on our forums at forum.paracast.com. That's forum.paracast.com. It takes just a couple of minutes to sign up, and then you're ready to get in on the action. Our co-host is Chris O'Brien. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. Hey, neighbors, ever thought about creating a website? With HostGator, you can create your own website with your very own .com domain name. HostGator has a free site builder and thousands of design templates to create your website today. Whether you want to create a blog, a photo gallery, a family page, or a website for your business, HostGator has the right plan for you, starting at less than 5 bucks a month for ultra-reliable website hosting with 99.9% uptime and true 24 by 7 live support available by phone, chat, or email and based right here in the U.S. Don't be left without a website. It's more affordable and easier than you think. Sign up at technightowl.com slash gator, that's G-A-T-O-R, to get the lowest possible price. At HostGator, that's technightowl.com slash gator to get a special deal on all their web hosting services. What is a wind generator? How can the wind produce power for a small cabin? How can wind energy be stored and used during an emergency? Can I assemble my own wind generator? For answers to questions about wind power, visit windbluepower.com. Did you know the wind could provide your family with emergency power? It can with a wind generator from windbluepower.com. Learn how our amazing Light Breeze wind generator kits start charging a 12-volt battery in just 6 mile per hour wind. Or see the new Cyclone X2 dual kit featuring two wind generators on just one tower. And learn why schools and universities across the country utilize our products to teach about wind power and alternative energy at windbluepower.com. All kits qualify for a 30% IRS tax credit for residential energy efficient property. Enter coupon code RADIO for a 5% discount at windbluepower.com. That's windbluepower.com or call 800-976-0026. That's 800-976-0026. Still worrying? From GMO to organic food in jeopardy divided by economic turmoil, there is still an answer. With just a little knowledge easily acquired, you will literally see food everywhere. Author Linda Runyon has these skills from having lived this way of life and created the tools so you could too. Wild food is economical, nutritious, freely available, abundant, and free for the taking. It is a skill that takes little time to learn, but stays with you for life. 
And now for a limited time, it's all on sale. It's called the Buy Buy Old Website Sale. Can you guess what's coming? Absolutely everything's on sale across the board, including our already discounted packages. And you know, the holidays are coming up fast. We don't know if we're going to have another sale this year. This was the only one in 2010 so far. We've been lucky to keep our prices the same since 2008, but who knows what the future will bring. So go to ofthefield.com now or call toll-free 1-888-51-EAT-FREE. That's ofthefield.com or call 1-888-51-EAT-FREE and cross food off your to-do list. Most Americans believe famine and hunger will never happen. But what if, day one, mayhem breaks out at grocery stores? Day three, families are on edge. Day five, the neighbors come knocking. Day ten, small bands of thieves begin stealing at gunpoint. Day fifteen, desperation, but the government can't help because there's no food left. Introducing the grab-and-go emergency food supply from Solutions from Science. 84 delicious, nutritious food servings, including breakfast, lunch, and dinner entrees. Enough to feed four adults for a week. Every meal 100% vegetarian for longer shelf life. Claim your grab-and-go emergency food supply today at foodshortagesolutions.com. That's foodshortagesolutions.com. Or call 877-327-0365. 877-327-0365. Grab-and-go emergency food supply. Better a year too soon than one day too late. How do you spell hard-hitting talk radio? G C N. The Genesis Communications Radio Network. You're in the Paracast. You never know what's going to happen next. Chris O'Brien is the co-host. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. We have Anthony Sanchez joining us this week, and he has a new book coming out called UFO Highway. We'll talk about the book as we progress. But right now he's talking about technology that can be used to cause people to think they see a UFO. Does the book primarily focus on this sort of thing, or do you intermingle this with actual cases? Um, I actually have some documented cases of the transient digital audio phenomena, but not so much where people are actually seeing the UFO, no. All right, let's go to the pace de resistance here. Delcy. Now, those of you who are very seriously inclined in UFOs think that's disinformation, a hoax, whatever. Before you tell us about your encounter with this whistleblower, what is the conventional wisdom about what that's used for, Dulce? You know, I have to tell you that uh, initially, I, I um, well, before I answer that question, I have to let you. I have to preface this because this is really, really important. When I when I began writing this book about three years ago, this book had nothing to do with Dulce. I never planned on writing about Dulce. In fact, I never believed any of the Dulce stories. Um, I've been researching UFOs for 20 years. I've been following John Lear and Norio Hayakawa since 1990. Um, I've heard about the Dulcie stories. I've heard about Phil Schneider. I've heard about Paul Benowitz. I've heard about Thomas E. Castello. And I just, this was something that just held really no interest for me. Now, most people know this. I am a software engineer, and I work in a high-level uh, engineering uh, capacity for a major semiconductor company here in Northern California. While there, I met somebody who was uh, working in a technical capacity who I later found out was um, working under an assumed identity and had been AWOL from a federal contract where they had been working on a satellite defense system. They had some they had some type of conscientious objection, decided to go AWOL. Anyhow, they contacted me because they knew of my UFO blog and gave me a bunch of information. And this is the person that I ended up meeting the colonel through. And uh, only because of the believability of the testimony and the vetting that I performed on the colonel did I decide to write about Delphi. Now, I, I didn't realize how strong of a subject this was. Nobody even knows that I, that I wrote about uh, human origins or that I, I, I study HARP and Project Bluebeam. The two main areas that I've been working on for like the past, you know, two decades, I, this Dulce thing has completely overtaken my book, UFO Highway. And I'm happy because it's giving me a lot of exposure, but I'm a little bit dismayed because uh, people are not going to pay attention potentially to my transformation hypothesis and my uh, connection, my heart uh, project blooming connection. So the Dulce business came about because of this meeting with this colonel. So many, so many interesting things were, were presented on the table immediately after meeting the guy that uh, 
I had to take a serious look at it, and that's why I called him Norio Hayakawa. One, I knew he was a, a well-known expert on the Dulce subject. Two, I knew he had a skeptical perspective of about 99% of the information that was out there on Dulce, and that's what I needed to keep me grounded with regards to this information because some of it is just really, really out there. Let's back uh, up a second, Anthony. You said that you vetted this whistleblower. How did you vet him? How did you check him out to see if he was what he claimed to be? Uh, two things. Uh, the first thing I did was, his, uh, with the full cooperation of the colonel, is we filed a standard Form 180 to the uh, the military custodian of records. That would be your national personnel record center for uh, the military personnel. What the, you get in return is a DD-214. Now, I'm very familiar with this practice because I own a company uh, in California. And I have a multiple award schedule with the state of California. It's called the CMAS. I'm allowed to hire active duty reservists and uh, retired uh, or, or, and, and veterans. To, you know, if they're qualified and they meet the qualifications of the job that I, the job description that I'm bidding on, which which comes through what we call a request for proposal, an RFP, I get points because I'm hiring a veteran or I'm hiring an active duty reservist. And uh, almost every single RFP that I've been on, if there's a qual if there's a uh, requirement for um, you know additional personnel like a networking or programming or anything of that sort, I I go out of my way to try to find these people. So I'm familiar with uh, filing the standard Form 180. In this instance, uh, I had the colonel actually file, but I filed with me being a witness. Uh, everything was filled out. I saw a social security number. I saw his. Uh, full name, I saw his uh, his uh, service number, I saw everything. Uh, then we, uh, I physically mailed that, and then uh, we received it back to my P.O. box, and then we opened it together, and I was able to scan the document immediately from, uh, from the packet. And I know it's real. It's real, and I'm going to have this in the book. I'm going to make it available at ufohighway.com, and I want everyone that's out there to go ahead and scrutinize it because it is the real deal. This is not a fake document. I'm not going to prison for forging a federal document. This is a real document, and uh, it's there for anyone who would like to scrutinize it. Does that, that mean that, that you're going to reveal his real name? No, it's been redacted, so uh, you won't know a social security number, you won't know his real name, but everything else is available. Okay. And this is the reason why the DD-214 was, was the most important aspect to this story. He told me, on my DD-214, there's going to be a clue. You need to find it, and you need to research it, and that will prove to you that I was where I said I was. So what I did was just um, I did exactly that, and I found a line entry under Section 18 of the DD-214, which was the remarks section, uh, that was uh, that immediately stood out to me because it just didn't make any sense. It had uh, I'm actually trying to look I'm trying to bring it up right now to look at it. Yes, it, it had a line that read Rio Arriba Co, comma DSD hyphen three. And I didn't understand what that was, and I knew from my research that Rio Arriba County is where Dulce is. Now, the, actually, the full line is 14N4, comma, staff, and then in and then parentheses, Rio Arriba CO, uh, comma, DSD hyphen 3. I only knew what DSD hyphen 3 meant through him because he told me, but I researched it. And the only thing that I could find was from the... Uh, from the uh, DIA, the, uh, the, uh, the Defense Intelligence Agency, they had a, a DSD-3 designation, but it came years after the colonel had already retired. Uh, for, the, uh, the, for the DIA, it, it was a General Military Intelligence Support Division, but my research told me that this thing came out years, years after he had already retired. Uh, the colonel told me the DSD-3 essentially stood for Dulce Security Division 3, and 3 being the main, uh, the three primary branches who operate there at Dulce, which are the Air Force, the Army, and the Navy. Uh, 14N4, 14N4 actually came back as, a, uh, uh, as an, intelligence, uh, 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 as an, an intelligence code, you know, personnel code, a personnel code. Sorry, I'm at a loss for words right now. But uh, I called, uh, I called the... Uh, the Bureau of Indian Affairs. So, um, like I said, under Section 18 of the Remarks section, I found uh, this uh, 14N4 staff, Rio Riva County DSD-3, and that was the proof of the existence for me that 
something from the military was there in Delphi. Now, I called the National Personnel Record Center in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, I have to make an, uh, 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 an admission here. I accidentally said, said uh, uh, New Orleans uh, when I was on the Jerry Pippen show. That's because my son, my son is a New Orleans Saints fan, and when I think St. Louis, St. Louis and the Saints, I just mix them up for whatever reason. Anyhow. Okay, I, well, I anyway, to... those who listen to the other show are now being corrected. That's right. So I contacted the military personnel records custodian, and I specifically asked him to tell me, what does Rio Arriba CO, comma, DSD3, DSD-3 mean? And the response was that they did not know what it meant at all, uh, that there was no code or definition return, referring to those terms at all that they knew of. So I then called the National Archives and Records Administration in College Park, Maryland. I asked them the same question. Now, this is the call that had me wondering. At first, the custodian I spoke to said that Rio Arriba CO DSD-3 was a classified designation, and they could not tell me anything about it. Then, upon subsequent calls back, it, as if I were experiencing deja vu, I was told that they didn't know what the term meant, just like they had told me uh, in St. Louis, Missouri, at the National Personnel Record Center. Which, incidentally, which is where I had filed uh, the standard Form 180 for, for the DD-214. But, not to be discouraged in all this, I called the township of Dulce, New Mexico. Specifically, I called the Department of the Interior Bureau of Indian Affairs, the southwestern region for the Hickory Agency. And I asked them, is there anything, is there any type of military presence there in the town of Dulce, New Mexico, or in Rio Arriba County? I'll tell you and what, answer, Anthony, we'll have to break here, but we'll uh -huh, pursue uh -huh. this in our next section. I'm also quite sure that you listeners are going to have a lot to say on our forums at forum.paracast.com. That's forum.paracast.com. And if you're not a member, why not? All you have to do is sign up at the forum. Go ahead and give yourself a member name, answer the acknowledgement email, and then you're ready to participate. And I bet you listeners are going to have lots to say about this episode. We have Anthony Sanchez. His forthcoming book is UFO Highway. We're exploring Dulce in New Mexico. What's it all about? The co-host is Chris O'Brien. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you own an Apple iPhone and love to listen to your favorite programs on GCN, I've got good news for you. I'm proud to announce that GCN has a brand new iPhone app available for our dedicated listeners at GCNlive.com. Listen to your favorite hard-hitting GCN programs live or on demand right on your iPhone. And the best part? The GCN iPhone app can be yours absolutely free. Download the iPhone app today by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit and carting to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Anthony Sanchez continuing his discussion about discovering this colonel, this whistleblower about Dulce, New Mexico, and what's going on there. The co host is Chris O'Brien. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. Okay. Anthony, let's continue with the information you unearthed. Absolutely. So, uh, not to be discouraged after calling the military personnel records custodian in both uh, St. Louis, Missouri, and then the National Archives and Records Administration in College Park, Maryland, where I was, I was now being told that they don't know what that stuff means, what those terms mean, I called up the township of Dulce, um, and I spoke with an individual from the uh, Department of Interior Bureau of Indian Affairs, uh, the Southwestern Region Hickory Agency. And I asked him, is there any military presence there in the town of Delcy or, or even in the entire county of Rio Arriba? And their answer was an emphatic no. I asked them if there was a recruiting office because I said, okay, fine. Maybe he was just a recruiter and he's making up this story because he knew of all of the, the hoopla around Delcy and, and maybe he was there at a recruiting office. 
And they said there are no recruiting officers, <laughs> recruiting officers there. In fact, they said there hasn't been a major military presence in Dulcie since the U.S. Cavalry last passed through there. So not to be, not to be, you know, completely thrown off, and, and I had to be absolutely sure about this. I called the Bureau of Indian Affairs Freedom of Information Act coordinator, a Miss Cheryl Vigil. That's who I spoke to, and I and of course I was simply told I needed to file. But that but now this is what really got me. This was what really piqued my interest. But she told me, but that expecting anything regarding the military presence would be almost impossible. And disappointingly, uh, you know, uh, I I asked her to tell me why, and she wouldn't say why. So the DD-214 is from the federal government. It, it's it's hard to contest in its validity. I mean, it, to me, the colonel is telling the truth. I, I have to go by the fact and the irony that it was the, our own U.S. federal government that proved to me who this guy is and what he says, you know, uh, he did and where he did it. So there, 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 there's some unknown heavily classified military presence right there in Delta, New Mexico, but no one's talking about it. And I'm going to make the DD-214 available to everybody to see. And, uh, yeah, it is redacted. Uh, in some places, uh, you know, his name and his social security number, but all the major stuff is there. And, and I've already shown this to people like uh, uh, Dennis Balthaser, Norio Hayakawa, uh, John Greenwald Jr. Uh, you know, there, there's people that have seen this already, and, you know, these are, these are trained eyes. These are people that have sniffed out fake DD-214s in the past, and they know damn well this is the real thing. So that's what makes me happy about all of this. Uh, the other thing was is I actually had the colonel submit to a polygraph examination, two of them independently on one day. I only had a small amount of time with this guy, but um, I essentially architected a set of questions, and he knew that he was being asked these questions under the premise that they were entirely about Dulcie and his military career, and he passed them with flying colors. So that's why gonna, I put this in the book. I mean, are you going to make I those felt, results uh, available as well? Um, I don't know. Maybe. If, if, yeah, possibly, possibly. People are going to ask, and so I'll probably do that. The one thing that I am doing, though, Chris, is uh, my interview with the colonel was on audio. I had three hours of audio. We actually met for six hours, uh, but it resulted in about three hours of audio of his testimony. I am going to make that available. The only condition was that I don't know how to do it. i got to fig- I got to contact somebody who can help me disguise his voice. So, you know, and it's off of a little, di- a little digi recorder, so... They can figure that out. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that happens. Maybe we'll assign make- Chris or myself for doing it because there are ways to just yeah. change the frequency of the voice, you know, make it deeper, yeah. make it higher. We don't want it to sound like helium, you know. I remember no. one time one of the shock jocks, <laughs> one of the shock jocks, you know, this happens quite often in a lot of cities, but I remember Howard Stern doing it, and he probably was ahead of everybody else. They would inhale helium on the air. <laughs> and everybody would speak appropriately. Okay, so you have taken the colonel's background information. You've confirmed it, that he is real. Yeah. So we're pretty sure that Dulce is real, too? Well, uh, my gut feeling tells me that this guy is telling the truth, and uh, I believe now that there is something there at Dulce. But more, more so because of the research I did when people didn't want to talk about it. So that kind of sent the signal to me, you know, I had a skeptical nature of, of, about this whole thing. And uh, when people don't want to talk about something that supposedly doesn't even exist, that sends out signals. And uh, people didn't want to talk about what could or could not be at Dulcie. Uh, I was just asking, you know, upfront questions. What does Rio Arriba CO, comma, DSD hyphen three mean? And I get that's classified. And then later on, I get we don't know what it means. So you tell me. Hmm. Uh, I've got a quick question. How did the colonel actually get your name, and why did he? Uh, what was his reason for contacting you and selecting you as the person to uh, to divulge uh, what we're going to be talking about here? That's right. Yeah. So this goes back to when I was working at the semiconductor company, and I met this individual who, um, after they left the company a year later, they ended up contact, talk, contacting me back, and. Uh, well, the, the shared interest that we had while the person was working there was uh, UFOs, conspiracies, and my blog. I had a blog at the time, which was uh, all about you know, the work that I did on uh, HARP and Project Bluebeam and, uh, you know, the, the UFO news and stuff like that. So they called me back, and uh, this person who originally had an English accent <laughs> calls me back. 
a year later after they're gone from uh, the company, and we start talking, and in the middle of the conversation, they drop their English accent. Sounds like an actor. Like, we have a lot of British actors who speak American, like Hugh Laurie on House, and we have a lot of American actors and actresses who do great British yeah. accents. Yeah, this guy, this guy was the real deal, man. He, he, <laughs> he had it down. And my, and my, uh, I hate to say this on the air because I don't want to get people mad at me uh, for for bringing them up, but my mother-in-law is English, so I know English accents. I know an English accent. And uh, anyhow, he drops the English accents, and um, lo and behold, he drops his bomb on me, and he says, "I, uh, you know, this is my, you know, uh, that wasn't my real identity. I'm, I was working under assumed identity. I'm part of this intelligence uh, channel." Uh, that's part of the, which is these, uh, these group of people that are underground, uh, AWOL and in hiding from the federal government or whatever. Um, he said, I was on this, uh, satellite defense system and, uh, uh, working for a federal contractor over by Moffett Field in the Bay Area. And, uh, you know, he was a conscientious objector or whatever. And he, he went AWOL from the project and he's in hiding and he's in big trouble apparently. So, um, he's part of this group. And this group has a connection to some higher level group called COM12. And I don't know much about COM12 other than what, you know, I was able to learn through Norio Hayakawa and some various resources that I found on the Internet. But it's some type of a group that is uh, working in the backgrounds, fighting against other malevolent organizations within the shadow government or whatever uh, that have infiltrated our regular government. I don't know. But this person knows the colonel through their intelligence channel and um, – the colonel was interested in talking with me because of something that I had written in one of my blogs with regards to uh, 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 alien-human hybridization. Uh, I just had this theory. I just had a theory, and, and it was there for anyone to read. And uh, apparently he had read it, was interested in talking with me, and that was the, uh, that was the, um, the, the, the catalyst to him wanting to tell me everything. Why don't you tell our listeners, and we only have about a minute left with this section before we go to the next section on the show, tell our listeners briefly what was in this blog that might have attracted someone's attention. I think it was the fact that I had done a lot of uh, work on uncovering evidence of uh, modern humans having uh, been genetically engineered at some point in our past. Um, not, un not unlike the evidence that uh, Lloyd Pye and uh, several other academics have uh, discovered. I'll go along with the academics discovering something. Lloyd Pye is not an academic as far as no, I I'm know. No, I'm not calling him. I, right, no, and also his, an his particular skull or whatever it is, you know, we have explored that subject ad infinitum on the Powercast in several of our episodes. And we don't find much value in that story. Now, maybe he's got more evidence now than he did then. No. So as you might imagine, in light of the shows we've run on that subject, we have some very serious questions about it. We'll go into that in a moment. We have Anthony Sanchez. The forthcoming book is UFO Highway. I'm Gene Steinberg. Chris O'Brien's the co-host. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> Is there a secret UFO agenda? Do strange creatures from the darkest corners of the mind roam the earth? Is there evidence for mind control, time travel, or devious government conspiracies? Find out the inside scoop on the latest conspiracies, paranormal activity, and Freudian phenomena when you subscribe to Tim Beckley's Conspiracy Journal. It's jam-packed with stories, special book and DVD promotions, and the best news, it's absolutely free, sent right to your mailbox. Plus, a bonus free email newsletter sent out every Friday. Simply send an email with your name and address to MrUFO at WebTV.net. That's MrUFO at WebTV.net. Find out what they don't want you to know. Are you wondering about your retirement portfolio? 
Are you confident that the financial advisor is experienced enough to combat climbing interest rates, taxes, and inflation? Stop guessing and go to the expert, Robert Chapman of the International Forecaster. When you subscribe to the International Forecaster, you get Robert Chapman's 45 years of experience and concise investment recommendations. Who needs sugar-coated excuses when you can get the cold hard facts and proven investment leads you can't get anywhere else? For a free introductory copy to Robert Chapman's International Forecaster, subscribe now at the internationalforecaster.com or call 877-479-8178. Experience the difference. When you subscribe, you can email Robert Chapman directly to obtain investment advice tailored just for you. Don't wait another minute. Subscribe today at the internationalforecaster.com or call 877-479-8178. That's 877-479-8178. Are you fed up with government of, by, and for the banksters and gangsters? Are you ready for a patriotic newspaper that pulls no punches, that tells it the way it is about the forces that have taken over and are destroying the United States from within? The Nationalist Times has been informing and educating Americans every month since 1985. The Nationalist Times features outstanding writers and columnists who promote a common sense, intelligent, and passionate alternative to the reigning cultural Marxist party line. If you believe it's far past time to get America back on track, you need to be reading America's best political publication. Find out why the Nationalist Times has many thousands of loyal readers. Subscribe to the Nationalist Times for the special introductory rate of just $29 for one year. Subscribe today by sending $29 to the Nationalist Times, 10161 Park Run Drive, Suite 150, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89145. That's $29 for one year to the Nationalist Times, 10161 Park Run Drive, Suite 150, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89145. There are many types of storable foods, but how about a superfood that contains every nutrient that the human body needs for survival? 50% protein, 300 milligrams of potassium per ounce, and calcium and magnesium for your heart and bones, with many more nutrients found in this incredible food source that the government does not want you to have. This product is available in powder, seeds, and oil, and is shipped free to your door in the U.S. This product is illegal to grow in the U.S., but is legal to import. Don't waste time thinking about storing food. Plan ahead and prepare for yourself and your family now and be in control of your destiny. You can save and invest your money, but in the end, food will be your greatest asset. Remember what the Word of God says in Ezekiel 719. Call 908-691-2608 and see what the powder, seeds, and oil can do for you. Remember, food will be your greatest asset. Call 908-691-2608. This product does not contain THC. Call 908-691-2608 today. Tired of searching for great talk radio? Search no more. I just want to hear more of it. We are the GCN Radio Network. Hi, this is Nick Pope. You're listening to the Paracast. We have Anthony Sanchez. We're talking about Dulce and about the possibilities. That, is it real? Hmm, we'll have to see. Chris O'Brien's the co-host. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. So before we broke... I was throwing cold water on Lloyd Pye. Let's take him out of the picture. Lloyd Pye doesn't exist. There he goes. He vanishes yeah. away. The trickster sends him away into the phantom zone, <laughs> along with General Zod in the phantom zone. Okay. So, okay. So I, I actually have evidence of, um, that, you know, to help support this hypothesis uh, that... Um, uh, establishes the foundation for proof that humans were transformed over the last 200,000 years at an artificially accelerated pace directly from genetic manipulation by somebody. I mean, we didn't Whoa. know how to do this 200,000 years ago. Now, I, I mentioned Lloyd Pye's name because he's already touched on this subject. Uh, Lloyd Pye doesn't have a degree in, in uh, research uh, geneticists, and, uh, you know, um, uh, genetics and uh, whatever. But so I, I don't really want to harp on Lloyd for that. I mean, he just brought it up, and he did bring up some valid points. But he goes off onto a tangent which I don't even touch. I I, I take a very very structured academic approach to this, and I cite a lot of people from uh, from, from uh, credible universities, uh, uh, so from around the world. So um, all that I do is I examine evidence that shows us how you know uh, early hominids transformed uh, into modern Homo sapien over the last 200,000 years rapidly at an artificially accelerated pace. And I even give the scientific proof showing how our genome was subjected to heavy genetic engineering. 
and uh, I covered that heavily. Uh, you know, science incorrectly teaches us that we share a 98.5 to 99% DNA similarity. Well, I found the, uh, you know, work by uh, a very, very uh, well-known uh, research geneticist who proves that there's a less than a 70% uh, similarity uh, between us and other hominids, um, you know, specifically our closest cousin, the common chimpanzee. Uh, so, Ooh, I, I'm not sure about that. You, you might you might want to check that uh, percentage out. Because uh, wait, I think we, uh, well, yeah, Chris, you're going to want to read my book then because I, I have some very, very shocking stuff that I share here. And uh, there's some really, really good stuff in there. Um, so, you know, and it forces us to rethink our, our lineal origins. And uh, that's all that I was doing in my blog, you know, talks about how in 2005, you know, uh, uh, you know, a, a well, well-known research geneticist published, uh, you know, uh, this paper on uh, this, this, this whole subject. And I really don't want to get into that because we're talking about Delphi. Um, but there was some stuff within that, uh, uh, within the confines of that topic that uh, picked the interest of the colonel because I touch on alien-human hybridization, which is something that he claims happens based on the writings that were found uh, in the Delphi caverns. Um, what they found were well. well hold, hold on. Let's let's set it up a little bit. Let's uh, yeah, give our listeners yeah. an idea of who the colonel was, what the uh, particular detachment he was involved with. Give a little background on actually what happened in the '40s, like you explained to me, in terms of the initial discovery. Uh, you know, kind of wind it back a little bit in the timeline and uh, and and take it from there. Okay. So the the colonel actually worked uh, as part of this larger unit. It was a medical unit. Uh, but he worked on a really, really small classified uh, uh, medical detachment uh, out of McClellan Air Force Base, which is in North Highlands, California, by Sacramento, California. And what he did was is he responded to these Type X events. If there was something uh, that was like a, some type of a classified exercise taking place, and there was like an accident or an injury, uh, you know, or maybe even resulting in a death, um, and it was some type of like a traumatic event or whatever, but it was part of something classified or or it dealt with something they didn't understand, like a UFO uh, so, or some type of unknown aerial phenomena. This is what his group responded to. So they responded got, to medical emergencies, in other words, that, that had to do with something classified. Yes. Um, and, uh, I mean, they immediately were flown on site to these locations uh, within, within as soon as they possibly could be. Uh, within like, uh, and I and I asked him to give me a specific example of of one of these, and uh, and this is available for everybody to read right now at UFOHighway.com. Um, if you click on the Delta interview link there, uh, that whole first snippet talks about this Type X event uh, that occurred near Fort Irwin. And I did my research, and I found that there was in fact something that had occurred there uh, by Fort Irwin. Uh, around the time that he mentioned uh, involving a C-130E Hercules, uh, and there were deaths. And uh, but I, you know, I couldn't confirm that this was the event that he's talking about. But I did find that there had been something. So again, you know, it's just uh, more evidence to that's that's telling me that the guy's telling the truth. So um, what he did was a behavioral and psychological analysis. If he had to lend a hand with triage or whatever, they would because, you know, they were trained to do this. But his job was to see, is this person fit for duty, to return to duty? And he said he had the power to uh, execute a, uh, a medical discharge immediately if they felt that there was some type of uh, uh, compromise. And, in fact, to, you, know, the, you know, to whatever the classified... Uh, uh, event was, uh, you know, if somebody went crazy because of what they seen or they couldn't handle what it was they were encountering, um, you know, he had that type of authority. And so in 1979, he had received a set of orders to report to this place called, uh, to a facility in Dulce, New Mexico. And he had never heard of Dulce, New Mexico. In fact, none of the people he had worked with had ever heard of Dulce, New Mexico. So, one, that was perplexing. Two, this was the first time he had ever received a set of orders that had come in with a stamp from the Department of Energy. See, these type of these type X events that he worked on uh, were uh, uh, limited to this uh, Air Force slash CIA periphery, and they didn't work outside of that. 
and I guess the CIA was involved because of the nature of some of the events and the classification levels or whatever. But um, this was the first time he said he had ever seen anything from the Department of Energy. And um, and he talks about how, you know, they, they made it so that uh, this was a very, very small a specialized unit that was being sent. You know, they were all, he was already part of a classified group. Uh, but this group was, uh, he was re- reporting to a brigadier, uh, general, uh, uh, brigadier general over at uh, Edwards Air Force Base. He didn't even know who it was. And uh, there was uh, another major, he was a major at the time. He was reporting uh, with another major who he'd only worked with briefly. And these guys were all selected for a specific reason, and they figured it out. They all had the same personality type. Nothing freaked these guys out, and that's why they were chosen. So they were heading into something and uh, that they had to be prepared for on the way there. They were given briefing documents which detailed uh, uh, the background of the facility that they were going to, and uh, he initially thought that he was reading briefing documents that were talking about American Indians. And later, you know, on the way there, he realized, oh, my God, this is, this is about a species, a different, some type of sentient, intelligent species. It had nothing to do with the... American Indians, like he had believed, and uh, and started talking about inhabitants of this subterranean, uh, you know, complex that uh, they were going to be uh, reporting to. I'll tell you what, we'll uh, get into more of that in a moment with Anthony Sanchez. Forthcoming book is UFO Highway, and we're trying to assess what might have happened over at Dulce, New Mexico. The co-host is Chris O'Brien. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in The Paracast. Ray Perkins, a reclusive veteran burned out from the Gulf War, lives tortured by relentless, perplexing nightmares. Nightmares of a horrific battle in deep space and of a mysterious woman suffering in agony for her devastated world. A woman not yet born, calling across centuries to him. Then, a coincidence leads him to his destiny, his chance to alter the universe. Attack! Attack! Of the Rockwell. The former fiction editor for Star Wars and Indiana Jones, Robert Simpson, writes The soul of the novel Attack of the Rockoids lies in its heart and passion for building a convincing tale of a love that spans the galaxy. A thrilling story. Attack, Attack. of the Rockwell is available now. Read a sample chapter and get a special discount off of the cover price at our website, rockoids.com. That's R O C K O I D S dot com. Attack, Attack. Of the Rockwell, a novel in the grand science fiction tradition. If you're a regular listener of this station, then disaster survival is vitally important to you and your family. Long term food storage, water filtration, emergency food preparation, and quality survival products are not just talk topics, but a way of life. We strongly believe in being prepared for any emergency. We are foodandwaterstore.com, owned and operated by people who are into emergency preparedness. And because we are preppers like you, we own and use the products we offer. You'll find quality name brand proven products like Global Sun Ovens, Wonder Mill Flour Mills, Mountain House foods, Seychelles and Berkey water filters, and many more, plus videos and articles at foodandwaterstore.com. 90% of our customers are return customers because of our low prices and excellent customer service. We still believe the customer is always right. Discover what your family needs to weather any storm at foodandwaterstore.com or call 1-877-773-7123. Foodandwaterstore.com, helping you prepare for the storms of life. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over five years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light System today 
day, complete with two black Berkey elements for only $209. And the Berkey guy will include three sport Berkey water bottles and ship everything to you free of charge. That's right, three sport Berkey water bottles and free shipping. An $87 value, yours free. Call the Berkey guy at 1 877 886 3653. That's 1 877 886 3653. Or order online at goberkey.com. That's goberkey.com today. Normal blood pressure, naturally. How would that make you feel? I'm Don from New Mexico. January of 2000, I had a heart attack. Then my real health began going downhill, and I had uh, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, poor vision, and I really wasn't sleeping well. I was a mess, pretty much. Don reports dramatic improvements with heart and body extract. I started taking uh, heart and body extract, and from within a few days, I started sleeping a lot better. My blood pressure uh, normalized, my blood sugar normalized, and uh, my sleep really did improve. Experience these benefits and more when your body gets what it needs with the assistance of heart and body extract. Order at hbextract.com or call 866-295-5305. That's hbextract.com or call 866-295-5305. Folks, I did not expect this at all. By the 7th, 8th, and 9th day, I saw dramatic improvements from taking heart and body extract. Details at hbextract.com or call 866-295-5305 for heart and body extract. Ten years, a decade of talk. Great talk radio is here on the Genesis Communications Network. We want to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And if you want to catch up on past episodes, we have hundreds of shows for you to download direct from theparacast.com. That's theparacast.com. Or check us out on iTunes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I should tell you that I do not tell people like Chris (laughs) O'Brien or Nicholas Redfern how to do the signature, the Paracast. They make it up themselves. I take no responsibility because if it sounds like one... Big mess. I didn't do it. Our Sorry. co-hosts, of course, Chris O'Brien. We have Anthony Sanchez joining us this week. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the PowerCast. And now, the rest of the story. We continue to explore what might have gone on at Dulce, New Mexico. That's right. So um, so the colonel was en route from Edwards Air Force Base to Dulce. And uh, while he was uh, being flown there... He was going to these briefing documents, which essentially had like this uh, compact version of this history of the people or the inhabitants that lived there. You know, again, he thought they were American Indians, and then he did. You know, it wasn't until he made eye contact with the other major, and they both looked at each other and essentially realized what they were reading. And there were several copies of the briefing documents, and that's an important part of the story uh, that you know uh, is mentioned later on uh, because the Colonel actually was able to retain his set. There was a uh, lieutenant commander from the Navy that they met up with there at Dulcie. And uh, when he turned in his copy, three sets had been returned back, uh, the brigadier generals, the majors, and the lieutenant uh, commanders, Navy officers. So nobody thought, you know, they thought that they had received all three briefing documents from their uh, contingent back. And I guess no one ever thought to ask, you know, where a fourth set was. Anyhow, that's how he has all this knowledge, not to mention the fact, and I really hate to do this because this really sucks because this is part of the book that was supposed to be a shocker, but the colonel ended up working for DSD-3, which is the intelligence uh, agency that operates the Delphi facility, and he had access to the DSD-3 uh, personnel and historical repositories, these database systems, and uh, there's a whole bunch more stuff that you know I can go into with regards to what he had access to, and it's all there in the book. Um, including this uh, uh, this system, which was just, uh, developed by the NSA. It's part of a, a, an offshoot of the Signal Intelligence, which is called ECHO. And then I'll mention that in the book, and that's really important, too, because apparently uh, many underground facilities use a system called ECHO, and I detail it in the book. Um, but, with, but back to um, the briefing documents, they arrive at Dulcie, and essentially uh, they arrive within, I think, 24 to 48 hours after some major engagement had taken place there between the inhabitants and DSD-3 forces. 
And uh, when they get there, a demilitarized zone has been enacted. I mean, a real DMZ set up right here within our own borders. Uh, and that's how serious they triggered a set of protocols enacting the DMZ. And uh, they get there, and, and uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff I can go into. Uh, but um, let's just say he arrives and he finds a whole other world that he was not prepared for. Uh, not, even though the Air Force thought he would be, you know, prepared for it because he had the right personality type, not even the Brigadier General was prepared for what they had uh, come into contact with. So, um, well, why don't you give us some background on on the the actual history going back into the '40s? I've, um, I found this part of the story when we talked uh, really fascinating. Why don't you describe uh, to the listeners exactly the the initial discovery and why uh, the team that discovered this underground complex was actually poking around looking uh, for a, a facility uh, location. Why don't you kind of dial it back to, uh, to the 40s real quick? Okay, so we have to go back a little bit further, you know, further than 1940 uh, to talk about what had transpired there in the Four Corners region. Um, as you know, um, we had uh, been searching for a home uh, for our, our uh, atomic development, uh, which was being uh, um, architected by uh, the Uranium Committee and uh, which had been triggered by the einstein Szilard letter that uh, helped us establish essentially the Manhattan Project. We had actually sent, we had pilots actually flying over the entire Four Corners region, probably extending all the way out to San Luis Valley. Uh, we know that they were up in Nevada and probably parts of Arizona even. Uh, but there was a lot of interest in uh, uh, New Mexico because of the, uh, the the terrain there, you know, especially with the closeness to the White Sands and then leading up to uh, the uh, montane like uh, uh, mountainous desert regions of like uh, northern New Mexico. Uh, like in Dulce and stuff, you know. Uh, anyhow, um, they had uh, they had found this plateau, this Archelada Mesa, this 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 uh, this uh, very very you know uh, interesting piece of land, and they had sent uh, this group that they had hand selected from Murak Army Airfield. Um, they were called the Murak Expedition, and these were a set of guys. They had surveyors, they had uh, you know like sharpshooters, and uh, and the colonel in his testimony had said that uh, he goes, this is going to sound old-fashioned by your standards. He goes, but you have to remember that uh, back in those days, you know, you know they had this was like a specialized uh, unit. Uh, this was like a uh, special forces squad or whatever. You know, they had specialists in all these different areas, and they even had the colonel said that they had cavers. And he says, you know, we call them spelunkers today, but back in the 40s, they called them cavers, cave experts, people who were, you know, adept at climbing up and down the, you know, cavernous type, you know, uh, walls or whatever. So anyhow, um, this Merck expedition found this massive cavern that was right there along the side. Now, I don't know which side, but one of the sides of the uh, Archuleta uh, Mesa, uh, you know, where where we would see, uh, you know, fragmentary columnar basalt, you know, the rock on the side making up the, uh, it's apparently there was a cavern and it's been, uh, it's been uh, covered up uh, since it's covered up and it's not there anymore. We can't see it. But back then people used to walk into this cavern all the time. I mean, it was, you know, if you've ever been to Northern New Mexico and Northern Arizona, you, you see these gigantic massive caverns and well, there was one right there. And it's gone now because it's been cleverly disguised. But anyhow, these guys, these soldiers in 1940 had discovered this cavern, and inside of it was a seven-level subterranean facility the size of a small city. And they discovered this by chance. And it was nestled smack dab in the center of the Archuleta Mesa up against one of the walls, and it, it led right into the, to the heart of the Mesa. And, uh, you know, again, the discovery came about when they began scouting areas of New Mexico for, poten for potential sites to house our atomic development. But what was interesting is what they found inside. Uh, when they first walked inside the cavern, and, uh, and again, the book goes into a really, really uh, great detail about this, and I'm just quickly paraphrasing. They found evidence uh, of a battle that had taken place between Apache warriors, and initially they thought possibly outlaws or... Um, Calvary or other Apache warriors, but the further they got in, they found small, you know, uh, diminutive type remains with enlarged heads and huge eye sockets, and their clothing was unlike nothing that the Apaches were wearing, and they were able to determine 
when this fighting had most likely occurred based on the fact that they found Colt revolvers, Winchester repeater rifles, uh, ammunition of the time, spent and unspent ammunition. Uh, and again, they had a, they, they even found uh, a bunch of weaponry uh, that, uh, that was of, the, of the Native American indigenous type weapons, you know, some blades with like cloth or leather type, uh, you know, like uh, uh, banding around the handles and uh, whatever they used. I mean, they were able to use that type of evidence to determine that, you know, the fighting had occurred initially between 1840 and 1870. And by the end, they, they assumed, uh, you know, through the supposition based on what they were finding, that it was indeed closer to the 1870 mark. They found this evidence of a battle, and um, they also found equipment. They found, now remember, this is 1940, so there were no laptops, there were no digital recorders. You know, all of this is being recorded by journals, handwritten. There were several people within the unit that had been designated to handwrite all this stuff. We'll pick up on that in our next segment with Anthony Sanchez. Hey there, would you like to join the Paracast team? Well, we are looking for an experienced sales and marketing person, someone who has handled the online world and knows about social networks. If you have experience in broadcasting, that's one huge plus. If you meet the bill, if you're the candidate, please send your message to sales at thepowercast.com. That's sales at thepowercast.com. The co-host is Chris O'Brien. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. Are you ready to order the official Paracast t-shirt? You asked, we answered. We're now taking orders for the official Paracast t-shirt. It comes in white, 100% cotton. The front of it features the same logo that we have on our community forums. On the back it says, separating signal from noise. To order the official Paracast t-shirt, here's all you have to do. Visit our new online store at store.theparacast.com. One more time, that's store.theparacast.com. You can use a major credit card to place your order for the official Paracast t-shirt. Hey, neighbors, we have one more thing to talk about, and that's more merchandise at the official Paracast store. We have hats, we have jackets, we even have a flip video camcorder customized with the Paracast logo at the official Paracast store. It's all now available at the official Paracast store, store store.theparacast.com. It's the end of summer blowout sale at HerbalHealer.com. Now take advantage of Herbal Healer Academy's incredible savings on colloidal silver. 500 parts per million pharmaceutical grade. All sizes from two ounces to a gallon on sale. It's simply the best colloidal silver available. And CoQ10 100 milligrams with Hawthorne. An exceptional supplement for heart and arterial health is only $19. Plus get the number one arthritis supplement glucosamine chondroitin. 60 caps for only $12. Where? HerbalHealer.com. Super Femplex and Super Maleplex, both great formulas for reproductive tonification, are on sale now. 90 tabs, only $15. Need a safe and mild colon detoxifier? Herbal Healer Academy's Colon Enhancer Large 250 Capsule Bottle is now only $18. There's so much more at HerbalHealer.com, but not much time. The end of summer blowout sale ends October 13th. New customers get a free catalog with your first order. Log on and hit the summer specials now at HerbalHealer.com. As gardeners, we can all relate. What do you do with all of the excess food that you grow? Freezing or canning may have been the process you've used, but the good folks at Excalibur Dehydrator have a healthy alternative to preserve the fruits of your labor. The Excalibur Dehydrator will help you preserve your fruits and vegetables quickly and easily, so you don't have to worry about premature spoiling. You can also use your Excalibur Dehydrator year-round to make delicious jerky. And the best part? The foods you dehydrate are free from excess additives, salt, and preservatives, and that's something we can all do without. To learn more and to order your very own Excalibur Dehydrator, visit drying123.com and see how the Excalibur Dehydrator can help you preserve your favorite foods. Mention coupon code GCN and receive a free book on how to preserve your foods. Again, that's drying123.com, drying123.com, or call 1 800 875 4254. That's 1 800 875 4254 today. 
The food storage industry leader has done it again. Introducing FDG clubs and survival bucks from the Freeze Dry Guy. For over 39 years, the Freeze Dry Guy has served various government agencies and the private sector with the finest in storable foods and emergency rations. If you've wanted to build emergency food supplies but couldn't afford it, now you can. Go to freezedryguy.com, click on products, and look for the Freeze Dry Guy clubs to pay as you go. Now you can build food storage without going into debt. Choose from a payment range of $95 to $450 per month. Our clubs work with everyone's budget. Plus, when you join Freeze Dry Guy clubs, you'll get additional rewards. For example, this month, get 10% back in survival bucks on all purchases in the Freeze Dry Guy product line, plus free shipping within the lower 48 states on any order amount. Hurry, go to freezedryguy.com or call 866-404-3663. That's freezedryguy.com or call 866-404-3663. The Freeze Dry Guy, the best you can buy. Tired of searching for great talk radio? There's a a wide range of stuff on here. We are the GCN Radio Network. Genesis. Genesis. You're in the Paracast. You never know what's going to happen next. Anthony Sanchez is talking about some fascinating discovery here that we want to explore a little bit further. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. Chris O'Brien's the co-host. Anthony, I had to interrupt you for the station break. Let's pick up on this. Got it. So um, in the reports that had been prepared by the soldiers who were told to record what they had found, they found that this uninhabited upper level, which where they were initially, um, had what appeared to be ancient artifacts interspersed among modern-looking but unfamiliar machines. Um, they wrote that on some walls they they were covered with what... Now, remember, this is 1940. They they said it was covered with what looked like massive radar screens. Uh, they all There also appeared to be individual personnel stations uh, fitted with which could be cryptography machines or what appeared to be electric typewriters. I mean, these guys didn't have a clue as to what they were looking at. And, they, and remember, all the terminology that we're getting to these briefing, to these reports is based on what they, you know, they knew, what they understood at the time. So one soldier had even wrote, everything we're finding is highly sophisticated in design, way beyond our latest military electronic equipment. It looks to be German, possibly. So... Um, This is what they were finding. Um, The commanding officer wrote that in each of the rooms um, there appeared to be devices, small small devices uh, similar to electronic television sets, uh, maybe German in appearance, and some of them were even immense in size, flat, covering almost every wall that they saw wherever there was equipment or electric machines uh, nearby. Uh, He says that at first they thought there were windows, but uh, they could see that somehow these were not, that they were part of these machines. They found thick black cables with lighted wires inside. Uh, They appeared to be like glass, but were physically malleable without causing damage, even when twisting or bending them. You know, extruding from the ends of the wires were bundles of, like, exposed glass wires with lighted ends that seemed to have been, you know, severed for some reason. Uh, They were were blinking, transmitting signals of some kind, Uh, but they didn't know what it was, where the power source was. These are the types of things that they found, and they were unfamiliar with all of it. Back to the fighting, uh, you know, again, you know, they had found these Colt revolvers, these Winchester repeater rifles, uh, and uh, this this was stuff that was strewn about everywhere, showing that there had been some type of violent altercation there. Um... The deeper they went, they started to realize that they were not alone. There were lower levels to this facility, and they had gone down to like a second level of the facility, and they realized that there was somebody or something in there. Uh, could have been animal, could have been other humans, uh, or could have been these things that they found, these small bodies that they had found. Uh, they were not sure. But... Uh, what ended up happening was that they did position themselves there at the entrance of the cavern and somewhat inside of that upper level uh, to this uh, cavernous facility that they had found, and uh, they started removing everything. Um, the commanding officer had the sense of uh, mind to uh, tell these uh, soldiers to not touch anything until they had experts come in and evaluate everything and then, you know, remove it with, uh, you know, uh, cautionary... Uh, 
uh, you know, protocol. And um, as they were moving these things, um, eventually uh, they started uh, hearing sounds, noises, and um, I don't want to go too much into detail about that aspect of it, but two of these soldiers had actually broken away, disobeyed orders uh, when they were about to leave the facility, and uh, they had an encounter with the inhabitants on a much, much lower level. And uh, all hell broke loose after that. And uh, one of them was captured, uh, and the other one was running back. And um, I really don't want to go into too much detail about that because that's for the book, and it's a really, really interesting part of this testimony. I'll tell you what, though. We should discuss the detail to at least give our listeners a full picture of what's going on in terms yeah. of, of the initial exposure. And then, of course, when the book comes out, they can read all the details. Yeah, so they began to find rooms, more discoveries of equipment, you know, uh, you know, all throughout this facility. And, uh, well, why don't I go ahead and, and just, you know, uh, tell you about these sheets that they found. They found these these metallic sheets. And this is the interesting part. Uh, which I really liked about this testimony because it gave it a real, real human grounded, uh, you know, uh, base. Uh, they found these metallic sheets, thousands of them everywhere. They found like libraries and stuff. Uh, these sheets were essentially, uh, you know, stacked up in these type of like, uh, you know, enclosures within the walls or whatever. And on them w with, mach with machine like precision were these etchings. And the etchings were so significant to this whole find because what they found on them was an Akkadian-like cuneiform writing system. What were, what were the sheets made out of? Um... They had to have been, uh, I don't know, but I do know that they're at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base right now, and the last person to have seen them well, how, was... How do you know that? How, well, wait a minute, wait, you know, you know they're, that they're at Wright-Patterson? How, how do you know that? Because that's what the colonel told me. Okay, so you know that he told you that. Yeah, so I have to go off the assumption that, well, remember, guys, I'm going off the assumption that he's telling the truth, else this wouldn't even be in my book. Now, he's saying that these sheets, all of them, well, all of the artifacts from Dulce uh, that were found initially in the 40s are now at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in something called the vault. There's a... there's a, uh, Right, the word, word, the word is allegedly. Allegedly, allegedly, got it. Okay, so now I'll agree to that. I'll acquiesce to that. Allegedly, all of these artifacts are in some warehouse at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base behind something called the vault. And the vault is something that once it's in there, it, it would take an act of God for it to ever come back out. It sounds like a Warehouse 13 in reality, as opposed to the Sci-Fi <laughs> Channel show. All right, let me ask yeah. you another question here. Did the colonel tell you what else is there in the vault? Or is it just these items that were recovered in this cave? Um, all he knows, all I know is based on what he told me, and it was just these items from the cave, which, I mean, these items alone are of uh, major importance and interest. And of interest. I mean, to people like me, I'm with a computer background, it's, it's, it's amazing. We don't think that the Nazis maybe had some advanced technology we didn't know about and that they employed this stuff. Do you think it's representative of a secret society on Earth or E.T. or what? Um, that's interesting that you would bring that up because um, the greys are not the only, the only uh, non-human species on this planet. There's another species which actually started out as, a, like the greys, they were totally alien, but now they, because of... Uh, circumstances they have had they were forced to uh, create this alien human hybrid for you know uh, to perpetuate the species to continue or else they wouldn't be able to survive on the planet um, and that now this is the apples and oranges part of the story this is going to drive people nuts I'll tell you what already I'll be honest with you you know there's a lot of stuff here that people will find incredible so I don't think we can make them any more nuts than they might already be <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Good point, Gene. So let, let me let me just go ahead and uh, uh, jump to this section really quickly. So people want to know the history. How well? How did these greys get in the Dulce Caverns in the first place? Right? And you guys want to know that, right? I wanted to know that. So I said, Well, where did they, where did they even come from? So apparently, a million years ago, 
a progenitor race of aliens came to our solar system. Ooh, ooh, wait a minute, a million, a yeah. million years ago. A million years ago, a okay. progenitor race of aliens came to our solar system from Sirius B to inhabit Mars. On Mars, they thrived and lived successfully until one day, unexpectedly, some catastrophic event occurred. An asteroid uh, destroyed the planet and nearly all of its inhabitants, which were these progenitors. They left Sirius B for whatever reason, I don't know. And he doesn't even mention that. So that was um, that long ago. Now, when I did my research uh, to that part of the story, one of the possible connections I found was that there's this West African culture called the Dogon, who perform a ritual every six years to honor Sirius, and, uh, and, and you know, Sirius A and Sirius B, uh, Apparently, they believe extraterrestrials came from Sirius, and that's who they're honoring, and I go into that in the book. But anyway, after the catastrophe, the progenitor race left Mars to Earth to avert a complete extinction. On Earth, uh, although oxygen was plentiful, its environment had very, le very low levels of like nitrogen, carbon dioxide, which were what they needed uh, to thrive, and that's why they were at Mars in the first place. So... Uh, the pretended race decided uh, to um, to live on Earth, and but they were dying. Okay, and let's go into this legend or the story of the progenitor race in a moment. Mm -hmm. Anthony Sanchez joining us on the Paracast this week. The co-host is Chris O'Brien. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you own an Apple iPhone and love to listen to your favorite programs on GCN, I've got good news for you. I'm proud to announce that GCN has a brand new iPhone app available for our dedicated listeners at GCNlive.com. Listen to your favorite hard-hitting GCN programs live or on demand right on your iPhone. And the best part? The GCN iPhone app can be yours absolutely free. Download the iPhone app today by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. Hi, this this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Neighbors, this is becoming wild and woolly here. We are now talking about a progenitor Yeehaw. race. Indeed. Anthony Sanchez is our guest. I'm Gene Steinberg. Chris O'Brien is the co-host and the sound effects technician. Whoa. I think Nick Redfern does a better deep-voiced laugh. I can do a good shadow laugh, but not here. People think I do bad imitations. Anthony, you know that we're obviously just fooling with you, but obviously this is something that certainly fits in with a lot of UFO-related legends. I think of the case of the, the Deros and Tiros of Richard Shaver, where yeah. the civilization goes go there, into Gene? the this is, this is right down, uh, right down there Ray alley. Palmer and Richard Shaver's alley, boy. But, Anthony, okay, are you accepting this possibility because the colonel told you this, or did you do something that would provide independent confirmation? And also, how did he know? Just because he's a colonel and maybe was working at Dulce doesn't mean he knows all this stuff. So how did he come by this information? Right. Exactly, Anthony. Why don't you, uh, you know, give our listeners a, a sense of the cuneiform tablets that were found or the sheets, the metal sheets that had the um, cuneiform type writing and uh, the fact that they were able to decipher this information. Yeah, they actually, once they realized that they were looking at an Akkadian-style cuneiform writing system, it was really easy for them to translate everything. It was much more structured and it had a much more complex um, alphabetic system, um, closer to the Ugaritic style of alphabet. Um, but it had, uh, it even had phonetic properties to it that they were able to 
somehow figure out. And um, I think that came about later with the help of the inhabitants, the Greys. But what I do know, um, and this is in the book, is that all of these uh, all of these sheets were essentially uh, cataloged. Uh, um, excuse me, they were sorted, cataloged, and then put into a system electronically, which is still there. Um, part of the uh, DSD3 repositories, and um, that's how the colonel uh, knows about all this. He says he spent years reading this stuff, you know, late at night, you know, learning everything he could about them, and it was through the translations of all of these uh, uh, these tablets, these sheets, which again uh, allegedly are now at Wright Patterson Air Force in something called the Vault. So, so, so he was able to bring this stuff home and and study it in terms of the translations, and the supportive no, data. No, not bring it home. Yeah, there at Dulcie, he had to study it there at Dulcie. Yeah, I asked. I asked that too, Chris. And uh, no, you, you, you. Well, you said late at night. Usually, people go home from work. You know. Well, some of us do uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, except yeah, for you, Gene. Yeah, You're no, always at home. No. <laughs> no, when you read the book, you'll realize that a lot of these people there live at Delphi. A lot of the, uh, the a lot of the people that work in this intelligence command, uh, excuse me, um, uh, in uh, DSD three, in installation command, uh, they actually live there. As do some of the scientific contingent who work there. Uh, but they do have a shuttle that takes them right back to uh, the LANL access point if they want to go to their apartment or whatever in Los Alamos or wherever they live. So. But um, the history uh, was studied. Something happened on Mars. They came to Earth. When they came to Earth, they were dying. They did die. But before they died, they created these offspring that were genetically enhanced offspring. But those offspring somehow became, you know, were they became afflicted with the same sickness. So they um, created an offspring again, genetically enhanced offspring. These are these as these Australis people that I'm talking about. And that group that preceded them were called the Anu, A-N-U, Anu. Uh, and I don't know if there's any relation to the Anunnaki of uh, Zechariah Stitchin, but I know that the colonel says that these people were called the Anu, A-N-U. At the same time that the progenitors created their genetically enhanced offspring, the Anu, they created the Aloha. The Aloha were the greys. They were created to serve the Anu, and to also oversee the hominid population of Earth. Remember, all of this happened once they came to Earth. Um, when the Anu, uh, like, their, like their predecessors, died off, they knew they were going to die off, they, they created this Ostra Albus, which was an alien and human hybridization. That goes back to why the colonel wanted to talk to me in the first place, because I touched on that in my blog. Now, the Aloha Greys were in existence at the same time as the Ostra Albus. The Anu had essentially warned the Ostra Albus that at some point in time, the Greys could pose a threat if their numbers increase. So the, the book goes into detail about how the colonel says at some point in time, the Ostra Albus infected the Greys uh, with something that, you know, uh, made their uh, lives hell and, and, and it created, uh, made it so that their it was it was impossible for them to continue to thrive on the surface. Therefore, they moved them to the other side of the planet um, and put them in these uh, subterranean caverns uh, where they could, uh, it would be like a sanctuary, where they could work on the, uh, recovering from whatever was infecting them. And they didn't know that they were infected by these Ostra Albus. And uh, what's interesting about the Ostra Albus is that... Um, they essentially became this uh, very, very powerful human lineage, which is very reminiscent, if not the Illuminati. I told you it was going to get into this apples and oranges section, and a lot of people are going to go, what? But Sounds like David Icke. Is, sounds a lot like David Icke. So uh, the, the infection caused an inability to withstand the sun's electric and magnetic radiation on the grace. Okay, so this is Richard the, Schaefer all over again. Okay. Yeah. I don't, right. I don't even know who that is, to, to be honest with you. Okay, Richard Shaver. Do you remember the name Ray Palmer? No. Okay, Ray Palmer, Richard Shaver. Ray Palmer was the co-founder of Fate magazine. He was editor of Amazing Stories in the 1940s when Richard Shaver came to him and wrote stories of being in contact with underground entities called the Deros and the Tiros. Palmer was also involved with Kenneth Arnold. They wrote a book called okay. The Coming of the Saucers, and that was okay, about the Mori Island affair, okay? 
Oh, 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 you know what? When I was in Angel Fire, this woman from Los Angeles approached me and was telling me about the Duros. And that was the first that I had ever heard about it. So, anyhow, so um, the Greys began to suffer. Uh, but what, this is what's interesting. They began to espouse a religious doctrine, which was uh, a rever reverence for the progenitor race who had created them. Remember, they didn't know that they had been... Uh, infected by the offspring of the progenitors, but uh, over time somehow they figured it out. That Austra Albus group that I told you about began a strict breeding protocol, eliminating as much of the alien DNA from their lineage as they could to become human in both appearance and anatomy. And um, through all of that, that Austra Albus became a tightly controlled bloodline with a small alien genetic footprint. Um, and they became the people who today represent the powers that be amongst the ranks of humanity, the oldest and primary families, including like the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Astors. Boy. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, well, I'm, I'm just telling you what I'm, you know, what I'm getting from this kernel. And the human nature of the lineage, uh, you know, you had this primary uh, lineage, and then you had these interconnected families, the other lineages. And uh, there's this uh, human, it's just human nature to sometimes uh, to uh, break protocol and do what you're not supposed to do. And uh, anyhow, um, these families cross continents, apparently, and uh, human appearance is inconsequential. They're North Americans, Asians, Africans, Europeans, Australians, South Americans. Um, there's, it, it, this, this is a real interesting aspect to the story. And, uh, Anyway, so the Greys have been, they were essentially sent there to die, and uh, they are still dying, apparently. And uh, that's why they chose... So how, how many were left at this point? What are we talking about in terms of numbers? Uh, there were tens of thousands of them just about like uh, 12,500 years ago. But after, um, after this uh, civil war that they had... Amongst the Greys, apparently there's this younger cast of Greys called the Dissidents who don't espouse the same doctrine as the older, lower-level Greys. Um, they, because they, they why, the, the, parent, what, the, the Dissident Greys don't want to worship this deity whose offspring, you know, is kill, you know, infected them. Okay, so we're talking about various them. factions of Greys. Two. There's only two. Okay, only two fractions of Greys. Anthony Sanchez joining us on the Paracast. The co-host is Chris O'Brien. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. Hey, neighbors. Ever thought about creating a website? With HostGator, you can create your own website with your very own .com domain name. HostGator has a free site builder and thousands of design templates to create your website today. Whether you want to create a blog, a photo gallery, a family page, or a website for your business, HostGator has the right plan for you, starting at less than 5 bucks a month for ultra-reliable website hosting with 99.9% .9 uptime and true 24 by 7 live support available by phone, chat, or email and based right here in the U.S. Don't be left without a website. It's more affordable and easier than you think. Sign up at technightowl.com slash gator, that's G-A-T-O-R, to get the lowest possible price. At HostGator, that's technightowl.com slash gator to get a special deal on all their web hosting services. Good day. Jim Newcomer from Minus Resources. October 8, 2010. Gold opened this morning at 1335.30. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1370, 17, 68508 for a half ounce, or 342.54 for a quarter ounce. That's 1370, 17, 68508, and 342.54. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, warning of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. CBO is drawing a parallel between U.S. economy and the Greek economic meltdown. Debt to GDP climbing to unfamiliar territory and deficits rising to unsupportable levels. Hi, Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risks of deficit spending, aging population, and rising interest rates spells economic disaster. Call today at 800-686-2237. I'll send it free. Again, call 800-686-2237. Ask for the CBO document. Call 800-686-2237.
I'm concerned about food for my family in the event of an emergency, and I know you are too. Are you ready? Don't wait for an emergency to happen. Put a plan together now with quality dehydrated food from Ready Reserve Foods. For nearly 40 years, Ready Reserve Foods has been in continuous operation canning the finest in dehydrated foods. Other companies just broker canned foods. Ready Reserve is the manufacturer controlling quality from start to finish with double enameled cans and nitrogen packing for maximum shelf life. Ready Reserve offers a balanced selection of fruits, vegetables, dairy products, proteins, and grains. Choose from a variety of pre-selected units or order by individual can to customize your own plan. When you purchase from Ready Reserve Foods, you are buying factory direct at wholesale prices. Call today for a free catalog, 1-800-453-2202 or visit readyreservefoods.com. Call 1-800-453-2202. Ready Reserve Foods, factory direct, wholesale pricing. Most people know that drinking pure high alkaline pH water is the most important factor in maintaining high energy and vibrant health. Most experts agree that the water you drink should be at a pH level of 8 or higher. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops combine a unique formula of the most alkaline minerals. Using Plasma pH Drops is the best way to make your water alkaline to help you get rid of acid and regain your health and energy. Simply put 10 drops in the water you drink to raise the pH to a healthy level. Alkalizing water helps your body rid itself of acidic waste and increases the oxygen content of your body. Disease organisms like bacteria, viruses, and cancer cannot survive in an alkaline high pH environment. Order your bottle of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops now by going directly to AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Or call 269-409-1776. 269-409-1776 today. America's number one source for independent talk radio for over a decade. We are the GCN Radio Network. We want to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. Get in on all the action at forum.theparacast.com. Anthony Sanchez joining us. We're talking about two classes of grays here. And we'll pursue this in a moment. He has a book coming out called UFO Highway that explains what all this is about. Chris O'Brien's the co-host. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the PowerCast. And as we progress here, and we're in the final hour of the show, something occurs to me. This colonel, do you think he's telling you a story? No, no, because um, there's two parts to this whole testimony. Um, There's his part, which is what he did and um, how he interacted with certain principles uh, throughout this whole, you know, Dulcie affair. And then this whole history aspect is just what he learned. And he's only relaying to me what he learned and how it, you know, relates to what we know today. There's connections throughout all of this stuff. I mean, I'm I'm seeing bits and pieces. You know, I've researched UFOs and, uh, you know, similar type fields for 20 years now, and I'm seeing connections to things. But wait a minute, Anthony, if you've researched subterranean uh, claims of subterranean civilizations, and you don't even know about... I'm I'm sorry, I never heard of this. You know, I'm I'm trying to, you know, I'm suspending my disbelief here uh, as much as possible, but, you know, you've got to do some digging, guy, and and really get up to speed on a lot of this stuff, because the Shaver Mysteries, I, I think think are really crucial uh, in this whole underground uh, alien dwelling civilization scenario and, and I, you know and I, I don't, I, I don't want to sound like I'm spanking you here but at no, the same time no. you know it's it's really uh, important to do the digging pardon the uh, and, the bad and, pun no and you know what Chris and I do it's just that you have to keep in mind for 20 years you know I have been working on human origins transformation hypothesis and studying the harp and project Bluebeam conspiracies, but working on connections between HARP and Project Bluebeam. I never was a specialist in underground subterranean facilities. Well, you're going to have to be real quick there, guy. (laughs) Well, I had read some books on, you know, from from Richard Souter and uh, some other stuff, but listen, prior to January of this year, this whole underground subterranean facility thing, this is brand new to me. 
this is brand new to me, and I've spent the last nine months, you know, absorbing so much information about, you know, the known underground facilities, like, you know, uh, Mount Pony and Manzano, uh, the, the underground nuclear storage facility, thing, uh, you know, and then the, the, the alleged underground facilities, like in Sedona, Arizona, in Dulce. Um, now I believe in the Dulce, that there's something there, Dulce, based on my research. I have done the digging. I have made the phone calls. I have filed the, the forms, and I have sent the letters, and I have... You have, and that's you know, why I, you're on the show. So why don't you continue? Yeah. Uh, we're, we're at our situation where we're talking about hybridized, uh, hybridization of these, uh, of these grays. We have two factions, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and we're talking about uh, a timeline that we're, we're what, uh, 12,500 years uh, ago. Why don't you continue? from that point yeah so um there was essentially you know this dissident class of grays who said hell no i don't want we, we don't want to worship these progenitors anymore because they had apparently they lived by these set of laws that were based on the doctrine this religious doctrine and you know once they made the discovery and knew that they had been infected by the offspring of these progenitors why are they going to want to worship these people so and uh anyhow you know all all that they do is work to survive and try to figure out how to continue living. All these cattle mutilations, all these human mutilations, everything that you hear about that happens within a 1,000 mile radius of the Four Corners uh, region uh, happens because of these grays. Um, based on all the information that I have here, um, you know, all of your more modern uh, abductions are, are taking place because of. Uh, the military uh, facilitate, facilitating these exercises to the use of of uh, great technology, uh, but to but for real world applications like uh, you know testing the effects of ricin and anthrax on a cow, you know uh, uh, excising the glandular organs and vital organs and uh, taking them back to their facility, their, their laboratories for analysis. Uh, same thing is happening with the abduction of humans. Uh, and, and all of this, again, is being facilitated through the use of great technology, and some of it is being done through conventional okay, technology. Uh, uh, Anthony, now. just for future reference on, on, on radio programs, uh, you know, the A word, allegedly. It's really important. Yes, yes, okay. So, allegedly. So, anyhow, today the numbers, the grays number about a 1,000. That's it, because, again, they're continually dying, and um, that's uh, allegedly. And um, the uh, in, in 1940, you know, we made this discovery, and uh, there's a lot of interesting information in the book. Talks about the two facilities outside of the main facility. I mean, uh, underneath the uh, Archuleta Mesa, there's your technical area. You know, there's your TAD1 facility, which is the main area off of the eastern slope, extending out towards the uh, County Road. Uh, I'm going to say 357 is uh, TAD-2, which is a two-level underground security auxiliary. And in 1991, there was a uh, third facility completed in Leandro Canyon, uh, which is southwest of the main uh, uh, Dulce area uh, facility uh, near Leandro Tank uh, and directly beneath the uh, Project Gas Buzzy Ground Zero location. And in the... In the 1990s is when the leaks uh, began of uh, my labs and super soldiers and bioagent development, uh, you know, all be, you know, uh, begin, began to emerge at uh, the same time as the supposed and alleged TAD-3 facility was completed. You know what, and, but this is the point here about everything being alleged. Okay? Yeah. And that is this kernel could be feeding you disinformation, hoping that you'll come out with this book eventually or some kind of public description and make a, a darn fool of yourself or a damn fool of awesome. yourself. Now, how do you look at this guy? Maybe he is who he says he is, but how do you verify any of this stuff? Well, I had to physically go to these locations to verify some of this stuff. Um, I went to Dulcie. I went off of the eastern slope uh, up from Lumberton up there, County County, 350, County Road 357, and I went to where he told me to find something, and I saw some mysterious stuff out there, you know. First of all, if you've ever been to Dulce, there's pretty much nothing off of the eastern slope except some some homes that are, in, uh, you know, uh, 
in cabins that are not even inhabited the entire year round. So it's strange to see some of the things that I saw there with my own eyes, you know, uh, strange things that look like transformers sitting in the middle of nowhere. They could be innocuous. They could be innocently there because they provide electricity to these homes. But I just saw some weird stuff that was pointed out to me to look for. You know, my due diligence went there and found stuff that wasn't supposed to be there that was there. Yeah, Um, I can vouch for that. I've I've been all through that area on a number of occasions. And uh, in support of what you're saying, uh, you know, I agree. There are a lot of very strange uh, things going on around the Dulce area. And, you know, I don't consider myself to be the most sensitive guy in the world, but there's a real creepy feeling around there that that it's hard to put into words. So so continue. I did not not feel comfortable when I was out there. I'll tell you what, though, we have to break before we continue with the level of discomfort you're going to report here and what happened to you. And I haven't been there, so I can't vouch for anything except to listen to what you have to say and attempt to understand it. We have Anthony Sanchez joining us. Chris O'Brien's the co-host. I'm Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. Is there a secret UFO agenda? Do strange creatures from the darkest corners of the mind roam the earth? Is there evidence for mind control, time travel, or devious government conspiracies? Find out the inside scoop on the latest conspiracies, paranormal activity, and Freudian phenomena when you subscribe to Tim Beckley's Conspiracy Journal. It's jam-packed with stories, special book and DVD promotions, and the best news, it's absolutely free sent right to your mailbox, plus a bonus free email newsletter sent out every Friday. Simply send an email with your name and address to MrUFO at WebTV.net. That's MrUFO at WebTV.net. Find out what they don't want you to know. To ship a vehicle safely from point A to point B, which company should you choose? Easy. Stateway Auto Transport. Why trust Patriot-owned Stateway Auto Transport? Many reasons. Stateway is not just a broker, but a fully licensed and bonded carrier with its own fleet of trucks and $1 million of cargo coverage insurance. With Stateway, your vehicle rides safely on a direct route on the same truck, and your shipment is always door-to-door with no hidden fees. And every shipment includes free online vehicle tracking. Simply put, Stateway Auto Transport is the best, most efficient, quickest, and friendliest worldwide shipper in the business. To receive a free quote from a live customer service representative, call 877-848-7474 or see us online at statewayauto.com. That's statewayauto.com or call 877-848-7474. Ask about discounts for seniors, military, and all GCN listeners. Stateway Auto Transport, your one-stop shop for worldwide vehicle transport. If you owe the IRS money you can't pay, then listen carefully, because you already know that the problem won't go away by itself. You can get help today from the leading tax expert in the country, Dan Pilla. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. The IRS isn't going to just forget about you. Right now, the IRS is hiring thousands of tax collectors to go after delinquent accounts just like yours. That's why you need to take action today, and I can help. I take a simple but proven approach to solving your tax debt problem. First, I stabilize collections so you don't have to worry about wage and bank levies. Next, I build a detailed plan to get your debt reduced to the fullest extent possible, sometimes even eliminated. Finally, I work with you every step of the way to get your problem solved once and for all. So call now for a free consultation. Call 1-800-346-6829. Dan Pilla will solve your tax problem guaranteed. He's helped thousands of people, and he can help you too. Call us today at 800-346-6829. That's 800-34-NO-TAX. In a coming apart world, you need something to keep it tied together. That something is Atwood Rope, the highest quality rope made in the USA from exotic braids for military, rescue, arborists, boating, tow line, shipyard, or decoration. Quality rope at affordable prices you and your customers can depend on. Find a dealer or shop online at atwoodrope.net. Enter promo code RADIO to receive a free 100 feet of 550 paracord. Atwood Rope, working to keep the world tied together. 
Go solar for cheap. Want to use solar power but the price is too high? Now you can build your own solar panels for less than $200 at 123cheapsolar.com. Don't laugh. We've sold over 45,000 solar do-it-yourself kits. Watch the step-by-step videos that even non-handyman types can use. We offer a 60-day money-back guarantee. Go to 123cheapsolar.com or call 800-713-0486. 800-713-0486. Reduce your foreign oil dependency when you go green with 123cheapsolar.com. Tired of searching for great talk radio? And I think it really does make a difference. We are the GCN Radio Network. Genesis, Genesis. This is Philip Rogno. You're listening to Paracast, one of the most informative shows out there. So listen closely. We have Anthony Sanchez joining us this week. I'm Gene Steinberg. The co-host is Chris O'Brien. You're in the Paracast for two more segments. And now you're in this area, Anthony, and you feel, well, things are strange, a creepy feeling. Do you think you might have been spooked by all the stories about what's going on there? A little bit. You know, it's it's natural, you know, human nature to be frightened of what you don't know. Before going up there, before driving out to Lumberton, I was in uh, uh, Dulcie, and I was talking with people in Dulcie over at the Best Western Hickoria, and... And they had told me that that morning they had there had been helicopters flying over the area, and then there was a caravan of Humvees and two white vans. Nobody knows where they came from. They just drove straight through the town towards Lumberton, north, you know, eastward towards Lumberton, and uh, that kind of freaked me out, you know. So um, I was constantly, I think, partially, I was on the lookout for that, and I didn't want to encounter that. So I kind of was a little bit unnerved. Um, I did go out to, um, as far as I could, into uh, this area uh, off the main road, off the uh, county road, and uh, I did find some things that just, you know, didn't make sense to me. It, it, what appeared to be like small transformers and stuff, and it just, but there was nothing there. So they just, I don't know. Anyhow, the one thing that I did want to mention that I thought that the two of you might find interesting is this. When I started doing my research into this uh, alleged uh, TAD-3, which was completed in 1991, this was supposed to have been completed around 1980, according to the colonel. But because of what had happened there in 79, uh, everything came to a stop. The only thing that managed to be completed, which was part of the original development plans for this third facility, was this water abatement called Leandro Tank. And Leandro Tank is, I mean, literally across the road from Ground Zero of uh, Project Gas Buggy. It is a 30 by 30 water abatement, a little small reservoir uh, for cattle. But there are no cattle there. There are no okay, cattle well, there. Well, let, let, me, let me just uh, bring our, our listeners up to speed about Project Gas Buggy. I think it was in 1966, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the Department of Energy exploded a small tactical nuke uh, way down into the ground. And I guess it was an effort to release natural gas um, so that it could be exploited by the energy companies. Uh, continue. Yeah, so um, anyhow, they found that, that the gas was heavily irradiated and unusable or whatever. But, uh, yeah, thank you for that background, Chris. Um, Leandro Tank was completed in 1980. And um, what it's used for, according to the colonel, is not for the uh, rehydration of uh, cattle, but because it's situated where it is, on top of ground zero, it's, it's used for the dumping of toxic chemicals, waste, uh, from that scientific facility, that third facility. That's what it's used for. Right, and, and they can uh, get away with it legally because it's on uh, sovereign Native American land. That's right. So, And nobody's doing any uh, checking out there. And... Um, uh, so that 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 was one point of interest that I came across. You know, one point of interest with regards to researching the claims made by the colonel with regards to this third facility. And um, I just thought I would mention that that there's this water abatement for cattle, but there are no cattle, and it's on top of a heavily irradiated area. Go figure. Yeah, with so, with um, some of the highest incidence of uh, environmental cancers uh, on record in the United States, by the way. Okay. And you guys, i got to bring this up right now because I know that we only have two segments left or one segment left after this. The reason why the colonel is giving me this testimony is because of human rights violations and environmental disasters that are occurring there. And he says they're just going to get worse. He was hoping for disclosure. Uh, he retired in 1983. He was hoping for disclosure by the year 2000. 
uh, like he said to me, it's now 10 years later, nothing. And uh, if we knew what was happening there, there's, uh, God, I wish I could remember how he put it. He called it innocent collateral something with regards to innocent people being abducted and uh, being used for these experiments. He says that uh, no one would, would stand still for you know, what is taking place there. I mean, look at Travis Walton. I mean, look at Myrna Hansen and her six-year-old son. Those are two cases I believe. I, I don't know much about Krista Tilton, and I know that she claims to have had an experience being abducted there um, and possibly taken to Dulce, but it involves an aspect of the reptilian story, which I'm not that familiar with, and I really don't have... I'm going to tell you, I asked the Colonel outright because people were going to ask me, were there reptilians there at Dulce? No, there's no, there was never any reptilians at Dulce. It is greys. And they're it's the only ones that are part of the story uh, with regards to the history, understanding these progenitors, their two offspring, and the cast that they created, the greys, to serve their, their offspring. Well, where are we now with, with the whole scenario? I mean, what's going on there today, uh, to your knowledge? In the 1990s, apparently, this malevolent organization took over AFOSI and, and even DSD-3, and they started these MyLabs programs. They started, um, they started uh, you know, uh, these, this, uh, this, uh, this biogenetic experimentation um, openly on uh, potentially innocent people being abducted. I don't know. Uh, there's... Um, a lot of bad stuff going on, and that's the reason why the colonel wants his story out. So, so are we talking about a joint-operated facility underneath uh, underneath Archuleta Mesa, as the uh, you know as the stories go? Or you know, why don't you uh, clue us in? What, what? How much does the colonel know about what's currently going on there? A lot, a lot, because he is part of this intelligence channel that I was telling you about earlier that has a connection to a group called Com Twelve. Com Twelve fights. The, that malevolent organization that he talks about, which I think has ties to MG-12, Majestic-12. Okay, okay, um, now here we go again. Let me ask you a question. Do you believe yeah. in MJ-12? You know, I personally met with Stanton Friedman, and I believe that some of the documents that uh, resulted from that whole MJ-12 episode were validated to be true. Doctor. Yeah, well, you understand, though, that MJ-12 is very controversial, and a lot of very respected Absolutely. UFO researchers do not accept the MJ-12 documents, even if they believe yeah. in some of the things that are referred to in those documents, such as Roswell. Yeah, yeah, I I tend to uh, believe that MJ-12 is very real, and uh, a lot of the claims made, a lot of the... A lot of the um, uh, points that came out of the MJ-12 documents are, in fact, real. So that's the, the, that as a, as a UFO researcher with 20 years uh, of my own, you know, work amount of work in this business in this field. I, my, I believe I believe in Roswell. I believe in Aztec. I believe in San Antonio. I believe in um, quite a bit of the uh, things that have occurred within the Southwest. You know, with regards to what I know okay. now. Be, you know, yeah, you know, just okay. So, so that's, that's understand also with regard to Aztec. I'll be fair to Frank Warren, yes. and I'll be fair to Scott Ramsey. The book yeah. isn't out yet. When we have the book, we're going to interview Scott Ramsey. We're going oh, to yeah. interview Kevin Randall, who does not believe in Aztec. Yep. Put them together in the first same virtual room and let them have at each other and discuss the ins and outs of that case. Until, of course, the book comes out. All I can say is, officially, we're kind of skeptical about it. If you accept mm -hmm. it, that's fine. You know, I appreciate that, and certainly yeah. I'm sure that Scott Ramsey is quite serious. Frank Warren is a person I know personally and respect a lot, and the fact that he believes in it, well, that leads me to want to take it seriously. Now, Well, be, the colonel mentions Aztec. Sure. Yeah. Okay, well, that's that's important, too. You know, I'm yeah, inclined to at least Roswell, give it serious Antonio attention. Aztec. Yeah, but that's, again, this is why I worry about this guy. Which is, yep. if he's telling you all this, is he there to basically pull the wool over your eyes? Because we hear about so many of these cases about UFO disinformation. I mean, you're talking yourself yeah. about, in your book, you're talking about a device that could be used to, well, create fake UFO sightings. How do you know? How can you tell? We're talking to Anthony Sanchez. He has a book coming out called 
UFO Highway. We'll join that UFO Highway for one more session in a moment. A reminder, go to forum.paracast.com, forum.paracast.com if you want to discuss anything about the show or write to us, news at paracast.com, news at paracast.com. Chris O'Brien's the co-host. I'm Gene Steinberg. For one more session, you're in the Paracast. Are you ready to order the official Paracast t-shirt? You asked, we answered. We're now taking orders for the official Paracast t-shirt. It comes in white, 100% cotton. The front of it features the same logo that we have on our community forums. On the back it says, separating signal from noise. To order the official Paracast t-shirt, here's all you have to do. Visit our new online store at store.theparacast.com. One more time, that's store.theparacast.com. You can use a major credit card to place your order for the official Paracast t-shirt. Hey, neighbors, we have one more thing to talk about, and that's more merchandise at the official Paracast store. We have hats, we have jackets, we even have a flip video camcorder customized with the Paracast logo at the official Paracast store. It's all now available at the official Paracast store, store store.theparacast.com. What is a wind generator? How can the wind produce power for a small cabin? How can wind energy be stored and used during an emergency? Can I assemble my own wind generator? For answers to questions about wind power, visit windbluepower.com. Did you know the wind could provide your family with emergency power? It can with a wind generator from windbluepower.com. Learn how our amazing Light Breeze wind generator kits start charging a 12-volt battery and just 6 mile per hour wind. Or see the new Cyclone X2 dual kit featuring two wind generators on just one tower. And learn why schools and universities across the country utilize our products to teach about wind power and alternative energy at windbluepower.com. All kits qualify for a 30% IRS tax credit for residential energy efficient property. Enter coupon code RADIO for a 5% discount at windbluepower.com. That's windbluepower.com. Or call 800-976-0026. That's 800-976-0026. All types of batteries for all types of gadgets. We'll say it again. All types of batteries for For all types types of of gadgets. gadgets. Electronics, toys, flashlights, computers, accessories, and more are at BatteryStation.com. Whatever type battery you need, alkaline, lithium, gel cell, NICAT, metal hydride, sealed lead acid, and more are at BatteryStation.com. Our homepage gives you quick access to ham, marine, police, fire, and aviation batteries. Plus, choose from our great selection of LED flashlights with no bulb to ever burn out and much longer battery life. Find many top brands, including Streamlight, Pelican, Surefire, Novatac, Gerber, and more at BatteryStation.com. You'll also find the most popular brands of ammunition and watertight cases for storing guns, food, electronics, survival gear, and more at BatteryStation.com. Call 417-257-7799. That's 417-257-7799. You will be surprised when you visit BatteryStation.com. Attention gun owners. You're into guns and many people you know are into guns. Well, someone needs to maintain, clean, and repair those guns, and it could be you. Now get a free how-to gunsmith DVD sampler from AGI, the American Gunsmithing Institute. Learn the art of professional gunsmithing as a part or full-time career. Develop a lucrative business by learning the art of gunsmithing through over 71 exclusive DVD training courses. Get started today by ordering our free DVD sampler video and catalog at AmericanGunsmithDVD.com. See how to quickly learn firearm disassembly, reassembly, accurizing, customizing, super tuning, refinishing, trigger repair, and much more for rifles, pistols, and shotguns. To order your free DVD sampler and catalog, call 800-367-9792 or go to AmericanGunsmithDVD.com. Ask about a bonus $10 savings coupon when you call 800-367-9792 or go to AmericanGunsmithDVD.com. Learn how. Learn now with AmericanGunsmithDVD.com. Bringing you the best in alternative talk radio for over 10 years. GCN. Great talk radio starts here. This is the Paracast. You never know what's going to happen next. 
Chris O'Brien's the co-host. Anthony Sanchez is the guest. Gene Steinberg is someone I haven't figured out what. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> and we're trying to make... A reptilian dinosaur, right there, Gene? Well, maybe I'm one of those grays, but I'm too tall to be a gray. Okay, at you're six like, one and a half, you can't be a gray. I used to be six you're, two, you're, but you shrink. You're a burrow, not a turo or a duro. You're a burrow. I haven't figured out what I am. Some people say things about what I am, but those things cannot be used on commercial radio. Ooh. Yes, George Carlin could tell you what those words are. That's as far as we. Okay, Anthony, we have one section left. So yeah. we know that you're putting together this material in the book. This material in the book about Dulce. And obviously you take the colonel seriously. You don't think he's pulling the wool over your eyes or engaging in disinformation, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, the, the colonel's documentation notwithstanding, as a responsible research, you know, it still was not enough for me to rely upon his info as the be-all, end-all of the matter. You know, in addition to the data that I had received from him as part of my investigation, you know, I needed to take it further. I wanted to see if there was any compelling evidence quotes, uh, potential links to the reality that something was in fact there. And uh, not just any pieces of data, but from, from, you know, from just any one or any source, but data that has substance to it. And yeah, and that's facility. important. And, and, and uh, Anthony, really, um, you know, I, I tip my hat to your uh, dogged, you know, determination and the extent of, uh, of the research that you've done. That's, it's really highly commendable. Thank you. So, you know, again, you know, something that had substance to it, you know, which could facilitate direction towards further proof. Was there anyone outside the immediate Dulcie periphery who was giving us UFO researchers valid clues about the existence of an underground base or Con 12 or Grays? You know, fortunately, you know, for me, I was able to discover this guy named Norio Hayakawa back in March. I knew who Norio was, you know, since 1989. I never talked to him, but... I would make a myriad of connections from areas that I would have never even imagined to, you know, to finalize this picture of the reality that Dulcie represents. Once I got a guy involved who had a skeptical uh, perspective about what was potentially there. He doesn't believe in reptilians. He doesn't believe in certain things. And he does you know, he believes that, you know, well, if you know Norio, he has very, very strong, you know, beliefs on what the military is doing, how they're involved with UFOs, disinformation, you know, that they're, that they're feeding to us and who's being fed this disinformation and whatnot. So when I began looking at the possible external sources, I found what amounted to an interesting bit of info that uh, came from several people. And, uh, you know, one of them was this former military intelligence operative and an author of several uh, books, you know, provocative books, much like, much like Colonel X, and the guy goes by the name Commander X, and the two of you probably know who I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. So Commander X, for me, you know, remains somewhat of a mystery because he's more of an unconfirmed witness as opposed to a whistleblower. Wait a minute, Com you know, wait a minute. Commander who? Commander X, a former military intelligence officer. You can find him at Amazon.com. Right, but it's a, we all know that's a fake. I know that's a fake, okay? I know who Commander X is. Let's just drop that. Okay, fine. I'm, th I'm thank you for telling me that because, uh, you know, he, his book was Entrances to Subterranean Tunnels, Underground Alien Bases, and he mentions, you know. Let me confess something here. Now, we know who published those X? books. No, I'm not Commander, Commander X. X. I know who Commander X is because I will tell you this, that during the early 1990s, I did a lot of the typography and production work for Timothy Beckley and uh -huh. the books he published, Global Communications, all that kind of stuff, into Planetary News Service, and I knew all about Commander X. Let's just leave it there, and you know what? Call it a house well, name. Call it a house okay, name well, for his publishing company. Just, That's it. I'm just in, I was just synthesizing data. I, I don't know who this Commander X is, but he said something about Delphi. I just captured it, wrote it down, bunched it in with everybody else's data, and made heads or tails of it. That's all I did. Okay, but well, understand, never... though, the reason I'm being skeptical about this yeah. is because I want us to realize that, you know, if you want to have your specific story or evidence considered valid, you have to vet stuff like this. So you see something from a Commander X, don't assume it's real because... 
you know, people just write books for various reasons, not necessarily sure. because they have valid information. Sometimes it's just a rehash, you know. A lot of times you see those names, and all they're doing is rehashing stuff. Listen, we only have a few minutes left, so let me ask you. The book, UFO Highway, give me uh, like a two- or three-minute summary and tell us when it's coming out. Um, It should be coming out by the end of December. Again, the book is essentially about this experience of this um, colonel uh, who was part of this classified medical detachment to respond to these Type X events, and one of them involved this interesting place called Dulce, New Mexico. And he had an involvement in this, uh, this this saga, this well-known saga behind Dulcie, but there's a lot of information that is out there right now, which is, according to him, inaccurate and needs to be corrected. And uh, it needs to be brought to people's attention because of these uh, environmental uh, disasters that are occurring there and these human rights violations that are occurring. I do know a doctor <laughs> who has been involved in uh, uh, an above-ground study of the mm-hmm. rates of cancer. I I do agree with you, Anthony. There is a real hidden story here in terms of the environmental health effects uh, of possibly above-ground radiation, below-ground radiation in the population in Dulce, in the Hickory Apache population, and in the surrounding areas. So you're absolutely right. There is a health crisis going on there, and I I commend you, uh, you know, for looking into this whole scenario. I, I really think it's important work. And uh, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to come on the show, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, we'll get to the bottom of uh, what's actually going on uh, there well, in Dulce. Yeah, thank you, Chris. And, and you know, I want to leave you with one thing too, Chris, because I know you're researching this in the Dulce area. Um, the one thing that the colonel told me um, is that the uh, there's a big misconception that power uh, supplied to these underground facilities up there in Dulce comes from these dams like Alvado Dam and Navajo Dam. They're not. Uh, these facilities use factory filled 200 kilowatt miniature nuclear reactors called micro reactors. They were designed and created by Los Alamos National Laboratories. They've been in use for over 30 years, he says. And what's amazing is that the technology is only now making its way into the commercial domain. Uh, these the Dulce micro reactors are only a few meters in diameter. They only require refueling once every 10 years, and they are ideal choices for the creation of these deep underground facilities, and those could have some type of adverse reaction on what's happening to the people in and around the Dulce area. So I just thought I'd throw that out to you. Well, yeah. certainly if people are being harmed, we want to know more about it. This book, UFO Highway, when will it be out? Um, uh, it should be out by the end of December. Uh, i got to call up my partner, uh, Commander X and uh, see if he's going to be willing to uh, identify himself with the, with the addition of Colonel X. Now that he's oh. embarrassed the hell out of me. <laughs> oh my. Yeah, I'm, I'm really upset about that, man, because uh, this I, 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 I read into this, this Commander X uh, thing and uh, I don't even want to mention Commander X at all. Uh, uh, well, having mentioned it, I'm not going to no, I'm not going to eliminate you, Brad. In- yeah, so the book should be out by the end of December. Yeah, and I'm really excited about it, and um, I'm I'm happy with the exposure that the information is getting, especially through shows like the Paracast, which are critical to the success of you know UFO research, and uh, it really really does a lot. It does mean a lot to me to be on the show. So I want to thank both you and Chris Jean for for having me. Well, we appreciate having you, and certainly I hope you realize that we are very serious about this. And as a result, we're going to ask you hard questions. So we're going to delve into every single area. When the book comes out, we're going to have you on again and go into areas where we have concerns. Let me ask you a final question before we let you go, and that is, do you think the colonel is ever going to come out and say, hi, here's who I am, et cetera, et cetera? I would hope so. And one of the things that I was actually hoping would occur was that when the book comes out, Somebody else other than the colonel who worked there would also come out, come forward and say, yeah, I did work at uh, TAD3, you know, and and it's part of a scientific contingent or with the military. That's what I hope. Yeah. um, The book is called UFO Highway. The co-host, Chris O'Brien. Anthony Sanchez, thank you for joining us this week on the Paracast. Thank you, guys. Before we go, let me bring you up to date on a few things. Next week, we'll have Michael Esposito. He is an expert on EVP, and we're going to find out there exactly what kind of research he's done. We're going to play some of the sound samples so you can get a picture as to whether these are voices from beyond, voices created in the studio, 
or so forth and so on, we're going to see exactly what that's all about. Also, neighbors, if you have something to say about this week's episode, please post your thoughts at the Paracast forums, forum.paracast.com. That's forum.paracast.com. We'll be back next week. Thanks, neighbors, for listening. The Paracast is a copyrighted presentation of Making the Impossible Incorporated. Tune in next week for a new adventure in the Paracast.